fans watching around the world. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. It is... Let's get straight into the episode. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we heading for the sun. Shotty got my high, I ain't tripping for the fun. Yeah, I won't start, I ain't tripping on my stun. Alright, before we start, I'll say something to you that I say to everyone that comes on, but I would not be saying it if it wasn't true. You're sitting here because I find you interesting, that's because you are an interesting person. I want to learn more about you, how you think, and how you feel, and I love that I have the opportunity to share this experience. So I really appreciate you coming over, thank you for sitting down, and ladies and gentlemen listening, I've been very, very excited for this uh, guest today. This podcast is going to be a good one. It's actually one of the most requested ones. And I think out of the last company I worked at, out of all the people that went were worked there, no one made everyone laugh more than my guest today. So no pressure. I'm not saying this is going to be one of the funniest podcasts in the world, but I've been looking forward to it. And this is Jack Regan. Thanks for having me, mate. <laughs> all right, sweet. Now we can just... I get nervous doing my intro too. Yeah. <laughs> Can't lie. All right. I don't know where I want to start. I, I was thinking, what about last night? What's the fucking story? What did you get up to last night? Because you're not oh, feeling too good today. We, I don't know. I don't actually know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Like we didn't I feel like we didn't drink that much, but fuck, I got an Uber at like one o'clock in the morning from yeah. Mortdale to Campbelltown, and <laughs> I fucking fell asleep in the Uber. I woke up. The car's like, where are we going? Where? <laughs> Chill out, brother. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, I said, oh, just go get some Maccas or something, bro. Yeah. He's like, oh, I can't go in if there's more than two cars in there. I was like, oh, fuck, just cancel the trip, bro. I'll, <laughs> I'll the get trip. another cunt to take me home. <laughs> cancel and then, the trip. All right, got home and woke up this morning feeling like fucking ass. Yeah, yeah. But no, we, me and Tubby and Chris Sauce just went to go watch the footy. Oh, you went with them? I didn't even, I didn't know that. That's yeah, news I, to I, me. Went, I, no, I went out with Tubby and Chris Sauce last night. Well to Elwood Hotel mm -hmm. and then we ended up in Miranda <laughs> yeah. and then back at Mortdale yeah. fucking... Bro, I don't even know where Mortdale is where's Mortdale uh, sort of I don't like I'm not the best with that area but it's kind of next to like I'm... you get there by King George's Road so okay okay so in a west like area yeah 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 Pretty yeah Bro, you could have been fucking Bathurst. I wouldn't have even known, bro. It yeah, could be closer to the Shire, <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. But yeah, all the all I know is a train line runs to the Shire. So yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing one. the reason why you felt so fucking tanked this morning is because Tubby was fucking leading the charge with the bevies last night. Yeah, he was. He was leading the bevy, <laughs> yeah. the bevy charge, but yeah, he's um maybe. Maybe I just can't keep up with him. Oh, did I did nah, it's a fucking lie. I, 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 I can keep up with him. I don't think anyone can keep up with him. I think, no, he, was, actually I think he was fucking... on easy mode yesterday. Though. Oh, yeah? He wasn't. Yeah, good. He wasn't. Because um... I've just... I've just I, to be honest, I don't know if I've ever personally experienced it. Maybe, yeah, when we've been living away together, me and Tubby, but fuck that motherfucker. <laughs> but I don't, know, no, he just... I don't know where it down, goes. Down, down, down. Yeah. Right, I can't relax. Yeah. It's just the footy. <laughs> yeah. No disrespect to fucking Jim, but I remember... Like, say it's me, Tubby, Jim, or whatever. I say we're going away for a job or something, <laughs> and there's a fucking case of beer. Only fucking 10 beers have been drunk, in, right? I've probably drunk three. Tubby's drank six. Jim's had one, and Jim's like, Yeah, I've had like fucking seven. <laughs> <laughs> Tubby would always get the shits. It's fuck off, can I've had seven. We've only had 10. <laughs> Yeah. Well, something's not out of oh, <laughs> Every time. It's so funny. Fuck, it's cool. So do you hang out with Christos a bit now that you're working together? Or uh, it's like, we do hang out a lot more now, but he lives in fucking Roselands. I live in Campbelltown. Mm. It's just like, if we want to hang out properly, it's either going to be have to like, if we're working on a job together and we just finish and go for a beer or something, but... Mm -hmm. I can't be fucked going into that area oh, yeah. on a weekend, bro. I just want to go home and relax. <laughs> yeah, I hate it too. I drive fucking, you know, at least 25 hours mm -hmm. a week yeah, of yeah. my fucking 40-hour week. So <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be driving. Yeah. No, I feel you. I feel you. It's cool. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, haven't, I don't know if I've seen the boys since I've left working with them, actually, now I think about it. Tubby, I have, and Georgie and Fossey, all yeah. these, because they've done the pods. Christos, fucking little <laughs> pussy ass bitch, hasn't come done it yet. <laughs> yeah. Don't be a punt. I'm actually buzzing for our episode, but he's, I don't know, he's just fucking, 
being a fucking vagina, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm fucking glad you came into the pod, bro. I barely got to even have any communication with you until you started, until Crystal started working with you again. Yeah. So what's it been like? Did you go straight from our last company to the company right now? Uh, I did take some time off to deal with a few things, but the reason why I left the last one didn't become like sort of present anymore. So I was able to go. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was at our last company. Mm -hmm. And don't me, hold back. Say whatever me, you want me to and say. you were at a job yeah. together. Okay, uh, let me paint a picture. What was the, where was where, this job? That, I think it was like a... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll beep that name out. So was it the oh. one at Kingswood? Penrith Ways? No, that was like, that was my last day. Okay. I okay. I was there. Oh, the one in Seven Hills? Quakers Hill or something? Quakers Hill. Yeah, I remember Quakers the, Hill. The hotel's just behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were there and I got a cold call from my current boss. And I think we might have left that job. We were going to... I do remember this now. We were going to like a store. I don't know what it was. It was like a sh warehouse, but I think they set up shops in there or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And straight after that day, I left for the interview. Yeah. He, he said, sort of, if you want to come, let me know. Mm -hmm. And then I did my two weeks at... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I was maybe off for like two or three weeks and then straight into becoming a beer reticulation expert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I always, I, I feel like with the last company, um, I personally enjoyed my experience working there. It obviously had its ups and downs, yeah. but I can see how a lot of people, not a lot of people, but if, let's just say some people, I don't want to paint a bad picture for the business, right? Yeah. But they don't have a good experience working at that company. Mm. And I can, I completely understand but some people when they do leave, I completely understand it. Like I, there's never been a time where I think, fuck, this person shouldn't have left. You know what I mean? I yeah. never really feel like that. I don't think that like ever. Like, mm -hmm. there's never a reason why someone shouldn't leave if they don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. Like, if they've got, even if, you know, I'm a bit of a cunt, <laughs> but I'll be honest, <laughs> yeah. I see the world as like a dog-eat-dog -dog yeah, sort well, of thing, man. For like, sure. At the end of the day, you got to look out for you, mm -hmm. and if, you know, if they might have treated you good for years and years and years, but in the last month, they want to get on your back. Mm-hmm. And if someone's out there offering a better job, better position, better money, you take it and don't look back. Yeah, yeah. For what? Yeah, it's, like, a, good, it's a good mindset. It's, like, it's, yeah, yeah. You, you might not be as loyal as some, but fuck. Yeah. But you're expendable at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> no matter well, what point, you're expendable. Well, there's one, I won't say who, but we both know who this person is, and he, I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, <laughs> But he, he lives by that motto of, like, loyalty. And now that he's listening, I know that he knows I'm talking about him. <laughs> but he's, he's it's honourable, I guess. Like, I respect it in a way where he's just very loyal to who gives him a chance. Mm. But at the same time, like, no one's loyal to the employee, you know, to an extent. Like, mm. fuck, so I'm with you, bro. Fuck, if you get a better opportunity, there's no better time than go than the day you get the offer. Well, and, I mean, you guys would know... Because I know you were pretty good with management at the place. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't, like, full credit to them. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but yeah. But they weren't giving me a chance. I was, you know, I was in my third year passing tools to tradesmen. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. I knew I was more than that. Mm -hmm. So why not go seize it mm -hmm. rather than, you know, sit there and fucking pass tools? What am I learning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I fucking know what a spanner is. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think that unfortunately some people just have that. Oh, there's a fucking little spider here. <laughs> oh, let me kill this little cunt real quick. I think that some people just have that experience at that company, and to be honest, people probably have it at every company. Hmm. There's probably always an unfortunate person that just has to have the fucking shit end of the stick, eh? That's what I'm noticing. To be honest, I kind of like it in my perspective because it means that I'm not copping it when someone else is like, copping it. <laughs> I think, like I was saying, like you got to be prepared to go whenever you want to and i was told from probably like my first year is never be the weakest link like never be the one dragging the ball and chain mm -hmm. because the first when everything's go sideways you're going to be the first one mm -hmm. to go and i think you just need to 
like there was parts at that company where I wasn't the weakest mm -hmm. and there was parts where people like like Ryan and George and mm. Bridie and all that mm. I don't know if you want to beat them but <laughs> fucking leave them all in the cunts no nah, like, them. <laughs> they like I'm sure Ryan's gotten way better mm -hmm. and I mean I can say this because I'm also in a way better position than I was but I feel like I was above them in not like I don't think I'm above anyone. Like, you just in, mean like in, in terms of the in the stuff. experience. Yeah, yeah. Like I worked for quite a large company before mm -hmm. that, so I I got taught quite a lot of things from early on in my apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. And they were just things that they would ask them, and he wouldn't really include me in the talks and stuff like. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm an apprentice too. Like. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you if you're gonna let everyone else join in, and I know the answer. It mm. just makes me look dumb because I'm not included and yeah. I can't give my point. Yeah. Um, well, I, well, I feel yeah. like in that regard, the way that company worked, it was all, it was almost different to any other company because it didn't matter what level of experience you had. It was almost how long you've been at the company for that put anything yeah. above it. So, you, unfortunately, you came with the experience, but you were still the first year, you know what I mean? And that's even... We've had tradesmen who've come through that company and then when we were apprentices... It was like, who the fuck does this cunt think he is telling me what to do? You know what I mean? Like, so they might last fucking a few months because they think to themselves, like, what's wrong with this company? Like, <laughs> yeah. this cunt's a second year apprentice and he's fucking not listening to me. And I just think, I think how that, but I don't know. For it, I can't take away any credit to the way the company's been ran because it's been running successfully for a fucking such a long time. It obviously yeah. works. I just think that it, um, just like most companies, people just have their experience there. Nothing's yeah. Nothing's permanent, you know? Well, that's like I said, full credit to them, and I don't, like, I don't try to burn bridges, and I hope I haven't burnt any bridges with anyone that I've worked for, but there was just the time that came mm. where I needed to go, so I went. Yeah, yeah. It's simple, it's that, there's nothing, it's not mm. deeper. Yeah, it's, yeah. I was yeah. looking out for myself at the time. Yeah, no, nah, there's no fucking, trust me, there's no judgment coming from me at yeah. all, and I don't think there would be coming from anyone else. I think what's more important than not burning a bridge with the company you work for, it's not burning a bridge with the people you work with. I think, I think from, that's more from, important. Yeah, from what I'm learning, that's that's the number one thing that will fucking yeah. take us through our careers. Because it's different, our trade, compared to most jobs, because we actually have a career instead of a job, you know? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so... It's such a... And people who aren't in the trade won't get it, but you'll understand what I'm saying. No. Everyone knows everyone. It's yeah. fucking insane, eh? Well, I go to do jobs for people, like, because we do, like, we do beer stuff, and some people want beer set up in their house. And, like, you know, you get in that conversation, oh, what do you do for work? Mm -hmm. And then they'll go, oh, this, this, and that. Oh, and I like, have a brother-in-law who works as a yeah. fucking HVAC you, mechanic. you might know him from, like, oh, he works for Kirby... Yeah. And then you, oh, who is he? He's like, oh, this bloke. Well, I don't fucking know that guy. <laughs> yeah. But then also it comes to the point where they're like, oh, you ever thought about going out by yourself? When they ask me that question, I'm just like, no fucking way. Oh, really? There is not a chance. All like, right, well, I want to hear what your thoughts on that is. Like, Why is not that? right now, because the fucking trade is so toxic. Yeah. <laughs> we are fucking so bad. Yeah. Even if the cunt, like, even if some cunt who comes in doesn't even do anything to you, if it leaves your company in a shit time, I mean, fair enough, if he comes in, he's not good, leaves straight away. Mm. But he comes and then goes at, like, a shit time for the company. You're going to badmouth him. Yeah. Like, you're you're going to... Yeah. Even if he wasn't even that bad, you're, you're still going to talk shit about him. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. And that is just a ripple effect. Like, well, you know what I mean? Well, I think that within the trade, though, it's a, it's a common knowledge that, like, when you leave a company, the owners of the company always get feral towards that person, no matter who it is. They'll make up a story. They'll fucking exaggerate. They'll badmouth, whatever. But I think every business owner kind of knows that. So I don't think anyone, anyone, when they call another company for opinion, it mm. actually matters. Because I've met a lot of people who have gotten bad opinions from other businesses, and they get hired. You know what I mean? Right. It doesn't matter. Like, I, but it I could think... also... Oh, sorry. No, you go, It you could go. be, like, also the fact that, you know, sometimes people want fucking three quotes before work get done. Mm -hmm. You're an up-and-coming thing, and that's... Like, you quote them, then you're previous company gets quote too mm -hmm. and they go oh we've got this quote from this guy oh that guy yeah oh no oh, fucking... don't go trust me go ahead you'll be calling me within six months yeah, kind like, of thing yeah 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 like, yeah so 
I was like, man, right now it's just so toxic in yeah, our trade. Yeah. Not I, bad, I don't, know, I I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it'll ever change, but because as you, as you said, it's a dog-eat-dog no, no, dog world. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? It's not just a dog-eat-dog dog period of time <laughs> in our industry, you know? <laughs> So, Maybe I'll just learn to give less of a fuck when yeah, I'm older. Yeah, I think actions speak louder than words, definitely. I think that, like, for me, anyway, I couldn't give a fuck what most people say about me, if it's negative, you mm. know what I mean? If it's positive, fucking cheer me on as I walk down the street. I'm, I'm, I'm all ears, you know <laughs> what I mean? But if it's negative, like, I don't know, like, I'm not, I don't think it would ever stop me. So is that the only thing that's stopping you from wanting to go out on your own? Um... Not really. Like, I'd say just, I don't think I'm in a spot financially to even think about it yet. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a fair enough. Just think yeah. on its own. To, oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I couldn't do it now. I'm Like, I'm good with money, but I like toys and yeah, shit like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I spend too much money. <laughs> yeah. I, would be like, I, I When I stopped working for the last company, I the reason why I stopped in the first place was because I wanted to try and work on my own. And I needed time to do all this. I had no, you know mm. what it was like working there. You're fucking, you're gone. Your days are gone. If you're working five days a week, you have Saturday, Sunday, it. Like you have not got an after hours fucking gym mm. schedule or nothing. Yeah. So I did that and I think I was working on my own for probably four to six, maybe even eight weeks. Between a month and two months, I was working on my own. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. I got. A, I can't lie. It was actually... It was actually a good life, but it was nothing, nothing was ever steady. Mm. It was like, I get abducted. Yeah, sick. I got fucking X amount of money to fucking survive until the next one. Yeah. And then I'll, you know, it was, it was all right. Cause I was just doing air con jobs, little tiny fucking cashies for cool rooms and shit like that. But yeah. I enjoyed it. So if, if you ever, if you ever going to try it, I would say that it's probably never a better time to try it than now. You know what I mean? I'm not saying go start your business now, but like. It was a good experience to dip my foot in the door and see what it would be like yeah. until I, and then I just got another, then I got another job. So, but it was an interesting period. I can say that for the least. Did you ever do much work like on the weekends or after work or anything like um, that? I did, like I started doing cashies for, you know, everyone starts out doing cashies, family, friends, but that was when I was on a low pay, mm. so I felt worth it. Mm-hmm. But then when they still want the same rate, but you know you're worth a lot more now. Yeah. You, you do struggle to get out of bed to get yeah. up and fucking work. <laughs> yeah. For like, you know, 400, 500 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's cash at the end of the day, but... Yeah. Yeah, no, I wouldn't get up and be <laughs> fucked to do that You know anymore. what I mean, bro? Like, yeah, yeah. You learn how much you're worth yeah. as time goes on. Mm-hmm. So... I've got a mate who's very generous towards me. He gives me, like, work helping him. So if I'm on nights and he, and he has daytime work for me, it's just the, it's the one thing that I'm incisive to do because it's like, he understands because he's a business owner and he's a recent business owner as well inside of refrigeration. So he can be like, yo, I'll pay you what I would want to get paid. You know what I mean? And then I always say to him, yeah, well, it has to all be cash. I get all the scrap and you have to buy me lunch and call me. You know? <laughs> and then, then even then I'm like, Oh man, like do I go? You know what I mean? You know you don't fucking you don't want to do a five five day week and then get up on Saturday at seven o'clock. Nah, nah, I don't work Saturdays, bro. <laughs> you don't do that. I don't work Saturdays or Sundays. I I'm happy to do a period of time of nights and days and just get enough time for sleep. Just have no fucking life in between mm. it. But fuck a Saturday. I'm not a type of guy to do a Saturday. <laughs> Like I said, for the right money, I could, I would be. But, yeah. You know, I'm a little slut. <laughs> yeah. I'm a fucking slut for money. Yeah. But, you yeah, know, 300 bucks, 400 bucks doesn't cut it for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just personally. That's I'm, not, I'm not saying you're any, you're, you're, you, like, I'm not saying you're bad because you would, someone would take that. Mm-hmm. But just for me, I just. Yeah. I'd rather just wait till next Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's cool, bro. I think that's, that's fucking cool. I, I, I got mates who work non stop all the time for, not that much extra money, you know what I mean? And I get it. It's cool. It's their it's their personality. It makes them fucking uh, machines. You but... just be fucking burnt out, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I nearly burn myself out just doing five days a week. Yeah, and like I, I think I've like matured to the point now where I can see it coming on. Mm-hmm. So I stop it before it happens. Because like when I first joined this company, I was doing, I was taking on call. On call, on call, off week after week. I think I did about six or seven weeks, mm. just straight on call. Yeah. Oh. And then, 
It was just like, holy fuck, man. Like, yeah. yeah, my bank's bigger, but... Yeah. Why do not feel good? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> Mentally. I, I, it's not enough for me. Money isn't enough for me to spend my time. It's not. Mm. I try and tell myself all the time that's fucking knuckle down, that's just grind for a period of time. And I barely get into my fucking plan. And I'm like, fuck, I don't even care. I don't even want it. <laughs> and then I'll just go spend the money on dumb shit anyway. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm not about that. I'd... I'd I'd definitely rather spend my... I'd rather work eight-hour days than 10-hour days. What about, you, what about you? I'd honestly do fucking 12 hours, like, but four. Four, four yeah, days yeah, a week. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'd be happy to do. Because mm. the thing is, especially where I live in Campbelltown, it's... I'm on the road at five o'clock just to get to the city at 7.30. And if I leave at four o'clock, I'm not getting home till six o'clock anyway. Mm. I'm doing exactly the same thing right now. <laughs> so, so it's like, I may as well just, you know, start earlier, finish later, be paid for the whole thing, and then have a 40-minute drive home. Mm. Like, mm. That, yeah, that's that how makes I sense. see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to pay me fucking four days <laughs> yeah. 12 hours. Well, it's something that I'm kind of pushing at the <clears> moment. I, I think that, like, that would be a life I'd love to live. Even if it's four 10-hour days, I'd do that. Yeah, four 10 hours and then option for overtime. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I'm with you. That'd be the perfect life. I think that's something that Australia's trying to push for. Well, that's what my old man's got. Mm. He works over at, like, St. Clair. Mm. You know, they just make plastic. You pour concrete in it, and then it's like a structural wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he went over there, and, like, his old company, he was doing, like, I think it was five, ten-hour days, like, mandatory. Mm -hmm. And getting paid overtime for it, but... He had to do it. Mm -hmm. But now he just does four 10-hour days with the option for overtime on Friday. Yeah, it's mad. And he's fucking like... I don't, I don't know if you realise it, but he's fucking got it so good right now. <laughs> yeah. But fair enough. He worked a long time to get to that point. Yeah, yeah. I'd take it any day. And it is something that Australia is trying to push. It's mm. like, it's not... It's probably not going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, they were trialling the um, four-day working week, weren't they? Yeah, I think they tried it in... I don't think they tried it in Australia, though. I think they tried it... No, I think one business might have tried it. Good thing we got a fucking fact-checker over it. Let's see. Because I'd just be pulling facts out of my ass. I'd be like, yeah, they did it in fucking Tasmania. The whole the whole fucking island did it. Yeah, no, they they did do it. Whereabouts? Does it say where? Australia? Yeah, there's... I think there's a list of companies, but I'm not going to fucking go into that. Yeah, okay. So there was a bunch of companies trying yeah. it out. Yeah, I, I think it, it showed good results. Yeah, it was definitely if productivity. You give your fucking an extra week day on the weekend, yeah. it's going to show good results. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine the company came to you and they said, "All right, if we see more productivity, then everyone gets to have the extra day off." I'd be pumping it out, eh? Four oh, days. <laughs> yeah, I'd be brother. pumping it. I'd be dripping sweat every day. <laughs> I wouldn't even fucking go home. I'd just be doing <laughs> fucking four days straight and be like, yeah. "See you later, fuckers." Yeah. Like, yeah. Imagine that. Imagine you... Would you ever do, like, a fly-in, fly-out type of work? Yeah. Yeah, I've would. thought about it. One bloke I used to work with, at, he was a... Um, well, I don't know if it was fly-in, fly-out, but he, he worked in the mines mm -hmm. doing... I don't know, they've got, like, demountable shacks everywhere, mm -hmm. and he would go in every day, and because of all the dust and everything that's in them, he'd be doing filter cleaning... Coil mm -hmm. cleaning like every day. Oh, as a fridge. Like yeah. as wow, yeah. wow, wow. So he was doing that every single day, like wow. a loop wow. around the fucking place. I was like, bro, I know what it takes to fucking clean a coil. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. How could I buy nitrogen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well. Then he said was he saying he enjoyed it? Oh I think he's like low key immigrant, so Yeah, yeah. Didn't know about it. He didn't really care. Yeah. He was yeah. just like, yes, Australia. Good money. <laughs> I can't know. Yeah, yeah so Australia. <laughs> yeah, he's like out in the middle of nowhere, and, uh, and raise a home. home. So this is home. home. This is Australia. <laughs> yeah, home. Why did oh, I come it's here? All true. <laughs> the dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've thought about it many times in my life, bro, and it's, uh, it would. I don't know. I used to think to myself I'd get too lonely living away, like being away from home, especially in the mines and shit. But now I'm back in Sydney. This is my second week, and I've been out of Sydney for 10 weeks, coming home on Saturdays and doing a podcast and fucking off. But it can't, you kind of get over it after like... Well, have you been a service technician? 
<laughs> yeah, I have. It's yeah. pretty much the same life anyway. You're <laughs> yeah. by yourself fucking every day. Yeah, yeah. So it's different though. It's a different, different feeling when you're away from home. Mm. Different hotel living and shit. Different feeling. It's something comfortable about our safety reset of sleeping in your own bed every yeah. night. You know what I mean? Well, the world yeah. literally restarts when you when you're in your own bed. Yeah, if definitely. you're not, you're you're still going. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah. So you do you still find it lonely being a service tech? I wouldn't say lonely. I'd just say fucking. Oh yeah, I guess I would say lonely. Mm -hmm. To be honest, like there, there's aspects of lonely, mm -hmm. but you know you've got fucking mates you can call. You know you're driving around for legal reasons. <laughs> like don't watch movies while I'm driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so you know, everything I say on this is a, <laughs> this is an entertainment based podcast. You know what I mean? Nothing I say on here is true. So I love watching movies and I'm driving. Yeah. yeah. I was watching a series coming here. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. You just got to do things to like keep your mind busy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's fucking like autism or something mm -hmm. of mine, but I'll go in like, it'll just be like rotation. It'll be like, oh, I, only, I can only watch something while I'm driving to keep me sane. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe two weeks later it'll be, I can only listen to something. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, two weeks later it would be, I don't like that kind of music right now because it's doing too much in my head. Yeah. I just need to go back. Back to watching something. Back yeah. to calling people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then just go back to calling people. Yeah. But it's good, like, in our trade as well. Everyone works similar hours. Mm. So. Well, I feel like fridges have the best social lives for being at work. For, for such a lonely trade, yeah. you have so many people you can, you can call. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, fuck... I don't have a big fridgy list on my phone anymore compared to what I used to because I've got a new phone, but it was just rotation. It was just this kind of this time, this kind of that time. Yeah, you literally learn when you can yeah. call someone. Yeah. Or... And you predict people's service calls, you know what I mean? It's yeah, weird. Like you, you have like you know, this roughly, sixth sense, you yeah. know what I mean? You're like, hmm, this guy works at this company. Like, it, you just subconsciously you think to yourself, like, yeah, there's a chance there's a little something. That's what's 30. so hard about. Yeah. You just try to call some company from. Oh. <laughs> Probably definitely on a call. Like, yeah. But you can get some people. Like, Tuppy's probably the easiest to get a hold of, mm -hmm. if you know yeah. where he's where he's at. Yeah. Well, it's funny, because you just look at the time and you're like, oh, 12.45. Yeah, they'd probably be going between jobs because they want to have something to eat right now. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> and you just though. know. And you'll yeah. be like, oh, Even if it's like 9.45, you're like, S first job should have been done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you go... But is he that good of a technician? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, probably I'll, not. I'll give him 15 more minutes. <laughs> I'll wait till 10. Yeah. Fuck, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, but I, I love the trade. How do you feel about the trade itself? I, I when I started, I didn't even know it was a thing. Yeah. Like, straight Neither up. Neither did I until my first day. I was yeah. going down like seek when I left school. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, air conditioning. I thought that was just electrical. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'm sending my resume to it. Yeah, because I, I started with, a, a, like, commercial air conditioning company. Mm -hmm. Doing, like, sheet metal and stuff mm -hmm. and ventilation. And then fucking got made redundant from that. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> my first... It was like first half a year, not yeah. made redundant. I'm like, yeah, fuck, this is this is fucking cool. Great trade. <laughs> this is so yeah. good. Yeah. And then one of my older brother's good mates worked at Ultra, mm -hmm. so I got a a little in there, and I also knew the boss's son from school. Nice. So I got a in there. I think within the second year, I sort of I don't want to romanticise it, but you sort of do fall in love with it. Yeah, for sure. At, I, at, I don't have anything wrong with that. Yeah. Don't fucking, don't not romanticise it. It's your fucking <laughs> career, bro. You should romanticise it. That's what I mean. If you, like, you know that stupid saying, what is it? If if you love, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of that, but I'm also a fucking liar, but I wouldn't fucking do it for no pay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'm all for that, as long as I get paid. Like, the idea of it's yeah. nice, <laughs> just not the practice. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Like, the quote keeps you going, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, on Thursday, because you get paid Wednesday, the quote keeps you going by Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, Tuesday, like, oh, fuck, I really hate this place. <laughs> yeah, I hate this job. Fuck, I'm a slave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's cool. I, I fell in love with it, I think. 
I reckon in my first few months, to be honest with you, I fell in love with it. I didn't know it was a thing either. I remember I didn't want to go to school. I I was going to get a job as a mechanic. And then my dad's mate had this business and he's like, you want an apprenticeship? I was like, yeah, okay. As long as I don't have to go to school. And I went and told the lads at school. I was like, yeah, I'm not coming in after tomorrow. I was like, like, what are you doing for a trade? I was like, oh, I don't even know, hey. Like, <laughs> fucking, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. That's cool. Oh, oh, but, um, I was going to say, I was going to mention something to do with working with Christos. I was going to do something to do with that. What's it like working with Christos anyway? Oh, he's a good apprentice. <laughs> that's jokes. <laughs> he's a good apprentice. That's mad. Nah, he fucking burns when I call him. <laughs> yeah. I don't do that to him. He's, yeah. He burns. Yeah. Um, no, he's, he's good. He, he does everything the right way, which is refreshing. Because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people get in the habits of doing things the wrong way, mm. which makes your job in the future harder. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then you have to go rectify it yeah again and again so it is good to think that he'll probably be there and do the job the right way the first time so i don't have to go back yeah nice. but he's also the callback king <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's a love this no nah, no nah. no nah, i'd say once he came over because i knew him at mm-hmm. and here mm-hmm. at the start at was oh, like give me a lot of beats i know bro let's <laughs> just say x x I right just, I'll just say, at that, at that place. <laughs> yeah. At that place, he was, um, he was happy at the start, I think, and then it's just natural, I think, once you're getting older, you want to make more money, mm. or you want to, even if it might come down to respect or something for him, and if he's just not getting it, I just think he, he was going down a downhill slope, but mm. he's fucking perked right up since he's come here, and he's, yeah, doing, no. he's doing really well. Nice, nice. Full credit. Full, full credit to Christos. <laughs> yeah. No, I love him, bro. I'm actually holding back from calling him right now because he said he's buzzing to do a podcast episode, but he's like, I just feel like I talk to you too much. Like, what are we going to talk about? I was like, yeah, you won't hear from me until then. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just have to fucking, like, do my list on my phone. Like, ah, fucking no. No, you're not doing it. But yeah, speaking of fucking, you, you made me think when you said it might be like autism, whatever it is, when you're in the car and you have to like, oh, this will keep me busy for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think about it in the same way where I think maybe I have some form of autism because I, I could actually be entertained by the same thing for the rest of my life. <laughs> it could not change at all. Yeah. I, I swear to God, I could, I could throw a can in the air and catch it and all day. And I reckon I'd be have a great day. That's why when I drive, it's just podcast and like i'm happy i haven't listened to a fucking maybe i listen to a song or two a week mm. a week if i'm pushing my if i'm feeling edgy you know like a weird day today yeah yeah i think that chromosome's disappearing <laughs> a little bit yeah got room for some fucking john oliver you know that john oliver song that new one that red, oh, yeah, redhead yeah. guy fucking be pumping that song going that's a fucking great song if anyone who hasn't heard it trust me click the link in the description it's the it's the best song ever. It makes me fucking just sit there and I just think about my life. I'm like, oh, I feel you, bro. I'm a slave. <laughs> I'm a slave. My brother's fucking like real big into being a working class bloke. And mm-hmm. it's just finally like it's, and because he's drilled it in me for so many years, it's finally kind of cool to see it mm-hmm. affecting. But people should have just known that it was already affecting them. Yeah. It kind of makes me think that everyone's fucking idiots. Everyone is idiots. Yeah. I, learn it, I learn it more and more every week, bro. I don't want to be that guy, but fucking wake up. Like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. So what do you, if, so obviously, like, you've got a good balance then between not knowing that work isn't your whole life. You don't live to work, you work to live. Yeah, in a sense. I think I'd probably fucking kill myself, though, if I wasn't doing something. Yeah. Like... I've, I've got to keep busy. Mm-hmm. I can't. I've tried being behind a desk. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And this trade just stuck with me, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I like doing it. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate install. You hate Don't it? Don't fucking put me in an install. Dude, I hate service, eh? Oh, service is cracker. I hate service. I hate it. I hate I it. I still do install, but my install's a bit different now. Mm-hmm. Like, I just putting beer taps everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier. Not not easier. I reckon that'd be pretty fulfilling, but if you have like a roll of them and you could make everything nice and even, symmetrical, ergonomic, I'd, Brother. <laughs> I'd like that for when sure. When you walk in and you see like, there's 
lines, fucking spaghetti everywhere. Mm. You rip all that out and put all these brackets in, run yeah. them all nice across, down, and oh, oh yeah. See, gets, that's gets, my fucking gets you job, a little bit bro. Fucking toey, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's my fucking job. Bro. That's what I do the trade for: ripping out shit and making it look good. And I like it. It's so hard to be because, like, obviously, customers aren't always going to be able to afford that. Mm-hmm. But it's so hard to just be like, I can't pull it all out. And yeah. Fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I can make this You're in the sexy. Ear. Do it. Do it. Just fucking do it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Let me show you what I learned. <laughs> yeah. No. And you just, yeah, you, you honestly like every time you walk into a new keg room, you're just like, let me get it out. <laughs> yeah 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 that's mad <laughs> yeah, that's cool that, that that's what i enjoy i hate just the timing you have to wait when you're doing breakdown bro i hate waiting for shit to cool waiting for ice to draw Although waiting ice for machine takes like minimum two hours yeah fuck that i ain't got that. So you have to watch it do three drops at least yeah i ain't that's got that bro. i ain't got that up here you know what i mean <laughs> like, i ain't got that up here I mean, you watch your ice machine, you do three drops, and that's six drop is the one that it fucks up on anyway. So <laughs> yeah. Why did I wait all this time? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll move it. I'll, I'll, I won't do fucking service ever again, I'm pretty certain. I won't be doing that. If you were to change, would you ever change careers? Um, yeah, I would change careers if it if it came to that point. Is there anything that, is, like, in, that looks interesting for you? Anything that looks tasty? Um... I'd probably do some sort of mechanics. You know, I've got all the skills and everything to start it. Mm -hmm. But like I was telling you a few weeks ago, I've been working on my bike and it's really like interesting to pull apart Mm -hmm. a whole complete bike down to nothing Mm -hmm. and build it back up. So what was the point of doing it? Because I've never done anything mechanical like that. Um, Well, the point was originally is... So it's a vintage, what's considered vintage now, 2001, Mm -hmm. 20 years is a vintage. Mm -hmm. So it's a vintage, like, motocross racing bike. And there's been a few owners over the years, and they've done their little part to it. Mm -hmm. But I just got it, and I didn't, like, I didn't necessarily like how it looked or how it operated. So I spent heaps of money doing suspension first. That got it, like riding a lot better but when it got down to the looks of it i was just i'm not very happy and mm-hmm. i came off like i i came off it as well mm-hmm. i could have been really bad yeah, <laughs> like i did a yeah. fucking backflip in the air oh my went god. like 15 meters oh my right off the god. Bike. and Fuck me. It, it was just lucky i had a good helmet oh. but i wasn't wearing any armor or any knee pads or anything so this knee is actually fucked up like, i don't know if you can see how squishy and big that yeah, yeah, that knee's fucked up. What have you gotten scans or anything on it? Yeah, I, so it's called a degloving injury. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much like all the layers. You know, you've got like your skin, your subdermal, and then muscles, and then fat, and everything. I don't know what order, mm-hmm. but when it hit the ground, it's sort of gone like that. Oh, so all the layers have gone. Oh. And just separated from each other. Oh. But apparently it's not so... Like, it's not a, a threatening... Mm-hmm. Like, not I don't think any, Yeah, I don't think anything's really going to... I could probably just have, like, early onset arthritis or something, but mm-hmm. it's just got fluid in there. It's been in there just over a year, a <laughs> bit now. Yeah. I had three drains yeah. of the fluid in my knee. Oh. One of them, they took out 800 mils of fluid what? one time. The next one was 400 mils, and the next one was 600. <laughs> so I had, like, I don't know how much is that? Like, over that's, three that's liters? 1.8 liters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, fucking hell, that's a Maybe lot of liters. another one. I can't remember. Because mm-hmm. it was definitely some, like, I think it was over two liters. So I think there was another one as oh, well. Yeah. And, was, <laughs> and, like, it's pretty fucked because <laughs> you just sit there and you you just like your legs up on a thing and they're just like getting a needle and going oh my and they, god they, they squirt it into another bottle <laughs> and then back in it's like fuck, how long is this gonna take and it just and, like, and you start feeling your body like soul tiring you're like you're like right 
Oh, I felt my knee do it. Like, because oh. I don't know if the body just like adapted to what happened. Mm-hmm. But then when I got it all drained, the knee the cap was like fucking flabby, bro. It was like <laughs> I just went like rapid weight loss. <laughs> yeah. And he was like moving around everywhere. I was like, yuck. <laughs> like the next day it was fine, but when he when he did it first up, it was like Oh my god. That's so <laughs> fucking uneasy to listen to, bro. Not oh. bad as some people's stories. Yeah, trust me, I've had a bad I've had a <laughs> fucked up knee injury myself, I've had a fucked up one, but I can't imagine watching someone drain liquid out of my body. Oh, and it hurts too. You your can dick feel... just starts like crawling back up inside you, you know, and, and then you go, what, you're gonna push a bug and get my bug out. <laughs> yeah. No, you um, you can because it's got like, it's I don't I don't even know what the liquid is, but it's a mixture of like, I'd almost say like pus mm-hmm. and blood mm. because it's gone through like separated so many different layers, but there's also like solids that come out <laughs> as well like I, I don't know if it's just like fats or something around the knee that yeah. was helping to fix it but when they drain it you can feel like you know if like you, you got pressure on something and like there's like little soul parts in it you can feel it go through the hose <laughs> but you can like a fucking like an old load yeah. like an old lumpy load <laughs> you can feel it like on oh, oh my god up, and i was like ugh. <laughs> I asked him if I could keep her. Yeah, keep, keep, a, while, keep like a, a little keep necklace. Keep a vial. Yeah, off bad That spirits. did not let me happen. <laughs> yeah. He said it was a biohazard. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> I don't have AIDS, man. Yeah. God, the insult, eh? Yeah, no, whatever, well, whatever comes out of you, we need to disintegrate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine how you could, like, make those little tiny vials and give them out to your friends as presents, like, little fucking chokers. That'd be cool. Uh, did you see the... There's... I'm not 100% sure of its factuality, but there's a bloke who got, like, his leg amputated. I don't know what the story is. And he invited, like, he invited his friends over, like, consenting. He's like, do you want to try my leg? Oh, Oh, that's a question. Would you you go to that party? I probably wouldn't eat it if he was just asking me to, if there was money involved, yeah. (laughs) Definitely. You mentioned being a slut for money, yeah. <laughs> no, more than 400 that. bucks. <laughs> oh, it has to be more than 100 bucks. I'm yeah. not going to eat some human yeah. for, for like 100 bucks. I reckon I'd do it, eh? I reckon I'd eat him. For free? Yeah, for free. Just for curiosity, I reckon I'd eat him. Yeah. I reckon, yeah, straight the fuck up. If, if someone... That's, that'd be the sad part about if it was at a, at a market or something, why I wouldn't eat it, because it's like, where did it come from? You know, yeah. what am I contributing oh, towards was this? Was it free range? <laughs> free range. Yeah, I think the vegans would be upset about that one. But yeah, if my mate was like, yo, I'm, I'm losing a limb, like we're having a fucking leg... leg <laughs> we're, getting, fucking... we're getting fucking legless. Yeah, <laughs> legless, yeah. Want to eat some? I don't know, why. Yeah, I reckon I would. I reckon I'd fucking... Are you... I reckon I'd full do it properly too. I'd full make a crack. It crackle. depends. Like, if I know you're a scummy cunt, like, yeah, true. I don't think I'm going to eat it. Yeah, what if he's like just a full fucking... Just a gross kind, doesn't shower much, you know what I mean? Like, surely you can't, like, I mean, pigs are pretty dirty animals, I but say, we I eat them. The, I reckon the fattier it is and the least amount of movement that body pie has had, the better it would be. If you wanted someone athletic, <laughs> I reckon his meat would be very gammy, you know, very yuck. You'd have to have like, yeah. a mate who was just like, you know, like, yeah, come on, eat my leg. Someone else cook it, can't be fucked, you know what I mean? You know, he goes to cook it, you're like, I'll take over, brother, I'll take over. <laughs> yeah, I'd do it, I fucking know if I'd do it. How much would be enough for you to fucking eat meat? Human meat. Like in that setting? Yeah, yeah. Like say your mate's your mate's leg. <laughs> um for me to like again, I think the money would change depending on who it was. Yeah. But I'd probably say like you know, like a if it was a good mate, maybe a couple hundred. <laughs> but a stranger, it'd be like maybe uh, a couple thousand. Yeah, a couple thousand. <laughs> what what if the what if the person that you you that was like off offering to eat the leg, right? What if like he didn't agree to it? Someone had cut off someone's leg and it was like a pedo. Like a full someone who's been done for pedophilia. What if people were like, yo, if everyone fucking agrees to eat the meat, we're gonna go cut these cunt's leg off. Would that be enough for you, incisive of you to do it? No, I'd just cut his leg off. Yeah, but, like, you don't know who it is. These people are like, yo, we're pedo hunters. 
Right, we 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 know where someone is. No, I don't. I think no. Like I don't think I'm a huge <laughs> fan of the idea. I would do it. Eh? I would do it. But I don't. I don't. I just don't understand what like how like what, what does that show? What's eating a pedo's like? You know what I mean? Oh, just like to punish. So that's the only way to get the guy punished. Yeah, I guess. like the the cops have let him off. Like you know what I mean? Like it's like all right, we're gonna have to take justice into justice into our own hands. And some sickos have yeah, got the I idea. Guess, yeah, I guess then that's more incentive. <laughs> yeah. Justice. Right, I'll only eat meat. In the I'm a vigilante. Of... <laughs> I'm only going to eat human in the name of justice. That's funny. Wow. Oh, that's so funny. I, I, I remember, I don't know how this reminded me of it, but I had this guy in my tape class and we were talking about pedos because I, I've known a few people in my life now, probably. It'd have to be fucking closer to 10 people who have been like molested so we're on this conversation and this and i'm like yeah fuck bro honestly i, sh- I just want to kill this cunt and then he goes to me he gave me i heard him listening this guy was a school shooter type like fucking this, <laughs> this, this guy was bad this guy was bad so he, he ended up coming up to me and he's like pull me aside and he's like hey hey he's like if you ever need any if you ever need like I'll, I'll kill someone for you. And I'm like, what? And he's like, like, I don't really care about my own life. If you want me to kill someone, I'll kill someone. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm all right, bro. I'll let you know. I'll let you know if anyone pops up. But yeah, if I couldn't, I don't know, I don't know how that reminded me of that. But yeah, it was fucking crazy. Is there any meat that you fucking haven't tried yet that you would try? It's like an exotic animal. Would you ever try like a fucking giraffe or elephant or anything like that? I would try all of it. I don't think I'd go out and kill a giraffe or an elephant to eat it. Mm. I think that's like they're just chilling, doing their own thing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, if yeah, come on, reason... you, well, you don't have to bring in the the literal no. sense, all right? We're just no, talking yeah. hypothetically. Yeah, hypothetically, no, I don't need anything. Bad no, I'll, I'll, I'll eat fucking anything. <laughs> yeah. Like, no need to make me feel bad. Now I gotta fucking let the giraffe go. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Nah, but. I'd eat anything. Like, I'd eat anything too. I think I've like I've already eaten snake. Yeah, I've had snake. Have you had snails? Yeah, I've yeah. had frog. Oh, I haven't had frog. Maybe I have. I can imagine frog tasting like. Oh, I can imagine frog being good. Is frog it's, good? Uh, it's just like chicken. Like yeah, it, it's yeah. cliche as to say, but the chicken of the swamp. <laughs> that's, what they, <laughs> yeah. that's what they call it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had like kangaroo, yeah, emu, kangaroo, emu, crocodile, oh, crocodile, that was camel? Nice. I haven't had camel. Camel, I heard Camel's camels are right. Crack, I mean, yeah, so fatty and like just makes you know you get a fucking beef burger and it tastes dry. Yeah, like, yeah. camel like eliminates that because it's got so much fat in it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, fuck yeah, I'll try camel. I might try camel. Yeah, I'm a sucker for fucking trying new food, but I'll pretty much try anything too. I'm I'm pretty good. That's why humans on my on my, on my list. Hey. <laughs> Look, humans on my list. You made the list. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love one of my favorite podcast moments is Theo Von asking Joe Rogan like, do you reckon he could eat someone <laughs> if he was in a plane crash or something like that? And I'm thinking, hunt, yeah, fucking hell, fuck, yeah, fuck yeah, sign me up. I'll be the, I'll be one of the first people to make the decision. Yeah, this guy's got to go. <laughs> I'm gonna eat. Yeah. All right, in a survival situation, brother. Yeah. Your leg is <laughs> your legs as good as mine. <laughs> yeah, doggy eat, dog eat. The only thing I won't eat in this world is fucking coriander. Coriander. Oh, fuck, I coriander gun. Bro. <laughs> that's nah. a strange thing to that avoid. Is dirty. I, I won't eat pickles. Don't catch me dead with a pickle. I even thinking about it now makes me want to hurl. Have you had bread and butter pickles, bro? I don't want to hear anything that's got pickle in it, you know what I mean? Bro. Like, Pickled. What about pickled carrot? Pickled anything, anything to do with pickled. Like the word pickle just throws me out. I hate the sound. I've never even tasted it. I what? just can't even. I can't even fathom the juice. It sits in a fucking glass container on a shelf with cheese in. Who wants cheese and a fucking bit of oil in it? Oh, <laughs> don't even at me with that. I won't eat beetroot. Don't even at me with that. And mustard. Pickles, beetroot, mustard, anything else. Oh, you must have the most boring McDonald's order in the I fucking world. I have chicken, world. chicken, bro. Everything <laughs> oh chicken. God. I have not eaten a beef burger from Macca's since I was probably five. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, I just don't eat them. I, I tried a cheeseburger, I think. I, mean, I think maybe that's where it comes from, the pickle on it and the mustard. Maybe that makes sense. Would you, oh, I guess if you don't eat beef burgers. But you see, you never had Big Mac? 
Big Mac sauce on a chicken when they made that one. Had you the chicken that, Big Mac. You know, like thirty percent of Big Mac sauce is pickles. Yeah, I've heard that too. So like, it's funny because <laughs> I like the chicken Big Mac. I did like the chicken Big Mac. Yeah. Thanks for ruining that for me. <laughs> yeah. like, mm, never eating that. Conning Maccas now. <laughs> never eating that again. Yeah. I had that. I had that fucking cheesy chicken thing. You ever had that fucking? It's like a fucking patty, bro. I can't believe I ate this thing. It was so dis. So disgusting to think of when I was eating it, but it was like a patty of deep fried cheese on top of your chicken burger. Hmm. Fuck, have you ever had that? <laughs> that yes. thing slapped, bro. That was, that's a... Do you get down to Wollongong mm. a lot? That I wouldn't a... say it's like home, but I've been there a few yeah. times. Well, there used to be a burger place down there called Sneaky Burger. They had this burger called the Holy Trinity. Yeah. Because they had like pork belly... Oh, you're painting a good picture already. And then I had like, I don't know, it was like Wagyu um, patty oh. and then chicken. Oh, and bro, then that's the fucking deep fried mozzarella. Oh, bro. Patty as well. I, I only had it once yeah. and it was enough, but fuck. It was enough it for was a week. Bro. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I shit for a week, to yeah. be honest, after it. Yeah. Half the farm died for that <laughs> one burger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I watched this documentary um, two weeks ago. It was something to do with, like, processed foods or something. It was like, it was like fucking all the sickness that comes from chicken, actually. That's how it started. It was about salmonella and how, like, so much chicken had salmonella. The cunts were just dying all the time, like, not that long ago. Yeah. And then eventually they ruled out this new thing where, like, oh, everything's safe now. But it's still something like 90% of all chicken has salmonella on it. It's some crazy amount. And then they started talking about lettuce. Almost like 90% of lettuce has this thing on it that can kill you. Hmm. Spinach has this fucking thing on it that can kill you. And I'm thinking, I'm watching this thing and I'm thinking, what can I eat? You know, <laughs> there's nothing left. Yeah. Oh my God. But that's, I think people think too much about mm. it. And they do all these studies and stuff. And I watch this, like, because I'm, like, kind of into fishing as well. Mm-hmm. And I watch this. Uh, they were just, like, catching flathead. And mm-hmm. then they'd take it out and fill it at... But then they didn't stop there. They, like, went into the organs and stuff and just pulled out all these parasites. Oh. And you just like, Ugh. No way. But they're like, no, this parasite means that they're in a healthy environment. I was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to eat a fucking parasite. Come yeah. Get out. Well, it'd be fascinating to know how much parasites we actually ingest. That'd be well, I think, I think we ingest that many mm. that we're just so used to it now. And... They don't really have a hold on us mm. much. Mm. Yeah, it'd be it's fucking interesting fucking too. I thought you were going to mention this documentary called... Um, it's not Blackfish. It was called Sea Spiracy. Have you ever seen Sea Spiracy? It's about fishing. It was like mass production fishing. It wasn't oh, like highlighting fishing. I've seen... I've seen things mm. on that. That was fucking really interesting. It was talking about the fact that like the companies that say, oh, we do recyclable fishing kind of thing and we don't catch anything that we're not meant to catch. No dolphins, no sharks, no whales. Nothing gets injured, just yeah. the tuna we're trying to catch. Something like only like a small percentage, like 1% to 10% only has to be actually put back into the ocean. So the yeah. whole scam, they actually still catch all the dolphins and the sharks and the whales anyway, you know, so that's a big scam. And then these companies that make get, get all these ticks of approval, they started to push this movement like oh plastic's really bad for the ocean plastic's really bad plastic straws are killing turtles all these mm. it started from these companies to make everyone think oh fuck we got to get rid of plastic so now we're dealing with fucking cardboard fucking straws and shit we got fucking stupid cardboard spoons for our ice creams and all this fucking shit that i oh it infuriates me just to take the eyes off the fact that the fishing companies are causing 99 percent mm. or 97 percent of the pollution they said there's enough fucking fishing line like rope and net and shit to cover the earth like 300 and something times being dropped every day it was some crazy statistic like that you know what i mean and you think i watch this thing i think to myself like fuck there's nothing that i could ever do to be good you know what i mean like i'm yeah. here to just fuck shit up that's why like i'm gonna get fucking cancelled but i'm like fuck the turtles bro when, <laughs> I, when they hand me those yeah. fucking cardboard straws yeah <laughs> 
I don't know if you've been to a vent. I want to go punch a turd bro. away. A vent in particular, like the cinemas. Yeah. They have the... Fucking, oh, those things. Those paper straws have the weakest constitution yeah. of anything yeah. I've ever <laughs> yeah. fucking met. Yeah. Bro, you put it in and like two seconds later, you try to pull the cunt out. And it's like... That, oh, half the straw fuck. is just dangling. You just said, oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, man, paper straws fucking irk me. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start bulk buying plastic straws from China <laughs> off AliExpress. I'm going to start littering. <laughs> For every cardboard straw they give me, I'm going to throw two on the fucking yeah, ground. <laughs> and then I'm going to stomp out a turtle. Until, they, until turtle. they get to the point of if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah, we'll go yeah, back to plastic straws. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to fucking start bashing turtles. Yeah, I love it. So, what about outside of work? What do you like doing at the moment? So, you say you're working on your bike. Yeah, I, I've got two bikes, so the first one I was saying that I pulled it apart. I rode that for a long time, but like I also said, I fell off, mm. cracked the frame, mm. so I got to get all that patched up. And it's, it's interesting when you said you felt the bike wasn't fucking up to your standard when you're riding it. Yeah. I would never be able to know that if I jumped on a bike. Well, it's like I didn't start riding when I was young. I only started riding like maybe two years ago. Okay. But you could just, like, when you've ridden other people's bikes and then you ride your own and you think, why does it make so much noise? Mm. Or why is it jumpy and stuff? Then you just sort of, you pull shit off it and you go, oh, and now I have to spend $1,300 on <laughs> suspension upgrades. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, um, I think you just, you just find your preference. Mm. Like, if you don't want it to be jumpy, mm -hmm. then you do what you need to do. To get it to be some way smoother. Yeah. So yeah, I've got two bikes, um, 450 and a 250, 252 stroke. Um, that's that's sort of just an ongoing thing. Like some weekends I'll ride, some weekends I'll be working on my bike, mm -hmm. and then every now and like I'll take my fishing rods and stuff to work as well. So oh, I, yeah. I, because I'm in the northern beaches all the time. So you just flick a rod in before and after work and because mm. like I like we were saying before, you don't want to get up at four o'clock on Saturday mm. to go down to a fishing spot. Yeah. Fuck that. To get it done through the week. Yeah, it's cool. Just have a, have a little flick through the week and like the traffic thing again. If you can waste 40 minutes trying to catch a fish, it's better than sitting in your car for 40 minutes. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 It's a fucking great idea. I never thought about doing it. I don't know. I, my old man's a fucking fishing man, and I just think it'd be it'd be it'd be different. It'd be it'd be experimental if I'd never experienced it. But I've experienced it growing up a million times. Mm. I, don't, I don't know if any part of me is is learning to get back out there and flick again. I, I just <laughs> I don't think any part of me is. I wouldn't mind spending time with my old man. Like that would, <laughs> that would be all right. But fishing, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of gotten over it as I get older. Yeah, I think it's. Did you do it when you were younger? I think I didn't do it enough mm. when I was younger, so when I got older, I was like, I can do something that I never got to do a lot mm. when I was a kid. I think that's a lot of things that the hobbies are now, aren't they? There's a lot of things that Ooh, we couldn't that's do. An interesting subject. I haven't ever thought about that. I'm happy to dive into that. So you reckon that when you're younger, if you don't do it much, it makes you want to do it when yeah, you get older? Yeah, like if you have a taste of it, but just say your parent can't afford a motorbike, mm. so you just... One of your mates has one, you go up riding that every, you know, couple months or something. Mm -hmm. And when you get older and you start making money, you're like, fuck, I can just buy one now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, one of my friends had, like, air rifles and bow and arrows and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we only used to play with it every now and again. But now that I'm older, every time I walk into, like, BCF or something, I'll just see these bow and arrows and shit, and I'm like, fuck, I'll just buy one. No yeah. one's gonna tell me no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm an I, adult I am with the adult king money. Of this world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck, that's a mad mindset. But I, I know that to be true because I remember being a kid, we never used to get soft drink. Like, I, I, I couldn't even tell you how many times I would, I couldn't count how many times I had soft drink when yeah. I was a kid. Because we had, we had cordial, but we weren't allowed to make our own cordial, you know? Mum and oh, dad had right. to make it our cordial. It was so watery, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. It was water. Make cordial scratch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm with... Oh, fuck uh, you, I'm putting half a cup of cordial. <laughs> yeah, bro. Now I'll drink the cordial <laughs> where I just straight, you know? But, Do shots of it when your mum wasn't looking <laughs> up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
But that that's why, like, because I never got soft drink, when I started to get to, like, 12, 13, 14, whatever, and, like, I had the option to go to the shops with my friends and like, get a drink, I'm drinking that thing that there's not a drop left in that <laughs> drink, you know, because I was like, when was my next drink? When's my next soft drink? And when's then I watch people, like, have, like, this much left and chuck it out. I'm thinking, whoa, offer it, you know what I mean? Like, I'll drink that. But now I will drink a drink till it's finished. I can't yeah. ever throw out a drink. I don't care if it's water. Like I have to, if it's water in a cup, I've got to drink, drink it. it. You know what I mean? Right. And I think that's come from being a kid. I think, yeah, I'm very much the same way. Yeah. Like, I have to finish it. Yeah. Even if I don't really want to. Yeah. yeah I'd be you like, fuck. I've got to finish it. Yeah. It's, I, I signed up for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to raise no quitter. That's fucking 20 cents there. I'm yeah. throwing out. Yeah. 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 So, but a lot of my friends who grew up drinking soft drink, they just don't have any value. in it. Not just drink, soft drink, and any type of drink. Yeah. Same with food. Like, if I fucking get a plate of food, I've got to eat it. I've got to eat it. I can't mm. let that go. Yeah. So, what about other hobbies? Any other... I'm trying to think now if there was any hobbies that I didn't get to do when I was a kid that I get to do now. I don't know. I don't have many hobbies. That's one thing about me. <laughs> the podcast, I like talking to people. <laughs> That's my yeah. hobby. Well, I'm... That still could, like, how, how many times were you able to, like, apart from being at school, how many times were you able to talk to people all the time? Yeah, yeah. So now that you can, you mm. do. Yeah, I think that, I think it comes from, I've always really had relationships. I've always, pretty much most of my life I've had a girlfriend from when I was yeah. a kid. So when you have a girlfriend, like, you don't talk to anyone but her most of the time, especially, like, if you don't learn how to put your foot down, like, I never really do. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty easy to just fall victim to making the other person my whole world. <laughs> so, so I think that that is what makes me so needy for friends, you know mm. what I mean? Like, now when I have meet people, like, I just fucking want to talk to them nonstop. I think that's where that comes from. So you're right. I guess it's kind of like reverse psychology almost in your brain, eh? Yeah, everything. Well, definitely. I'd yeah. say so. But apart from fishing and riding, not much. Like, I've got a girlfriend. So okay. So I fucking just hang out with her mm-hmm. all the time. Not like I, not because I'm purposely just going, oh, she's the love of my life. It's just convenient. Like, yeah, it is convenient. Yeah, of course. Is it together? No. Nah. No, but okay. we like you know what I mean. Like you like each other. Yeah. You pretty well, much you, are. You should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should. I've, I've definitely experienced <laughs> like not liking business. Like that. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. If you like each other. Yeah. You're always together. Mm-hmm. In like you, sh- uh, in some sense of it, you should be each other's like first priority mm. to an extent. But always keep yourself number one. Yeah. That is the main, that yeah. is the main thing. Yeah. Um, but if, like, then you don't have to go out and make friends. You don't have to organise shit. You can just go hang out with them or just have them there and fucking play COD or yeah. something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. have to be talking to them. Yeah. But it's just easier. Yeah. I think. See, I've never, I've never, I've never learned that skill. It's a skill that I'm definitely bringing into the next relationship I get into. Yeah. Like, it's not about. i got to live for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think once you realise that, yeah, they might be the most important person in your life, but you should always be your most important person. Because mm. if you can't, it's another cliche, but like, I know you're saying, I say if you can't, episodes, you know, if you can't love yourself. Yeah, if you can't like, like, if you can't learn to put yourself first, how do you think that you know how to put someone else mm. first? Mm. So, yeah, in, in a way. I love cliches, bro. Don't, yeah. don't hold back on the cliches. I love cliches. But they're, they're, they're cliches for a reason. Yeah. Because they're so prominent. Yeah. I you think know? cliche is another word for the best way to say it. Yeah. yeah. Just on, just on a, I've got to fucking clear some things up. All right. I've been, all right. Hang been, on, let me just fucking mental reset. I saw the way the body changed. I'm going to have to fucking get ready for this, all right? I've been, I, you know, I listen to your podcast. And I've I been seeing people appreciate talk it. about me. And I've been called... A fucking weirdo. I mean, called like a lazy cunt, this and that. Oh, I would, okay. Like the weirdo thing I was on board with. All right. I'm, I'm happy to see that one out, <laughs> but a, a fucking weirdo. You're going to have to paint a bit of picture because I don't remember that one. You don't who, have to out the Who person. called me a weirdo? Yeah, yeah. It was Jaden. Jaden, yeah. okay. Jaden Howard. Yeah, well, I can imagine know, him what? saying it now. If yeah. Back. I can imagine him but saying it. The thing is, I don't, like, they didn't know me. Mm-hmm. Like, you. 
I'm not going to turn up to work and be fucking fully transparent with everyone. Mm-hmm. I've got to do what I've got to do to get through. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I, I, don't, I couldn't give a fuck if he called me mm-hmm. a weirdo or some like other people, mm-hmm. whatever they say. But like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you don't you know, don't know, someone, you don't you know someone. Yeah, yeah. And Jaden was never one of the people that I was ever going to be transparent with. Yeah, okay, I'm liking I this babe. Woo, woo, Just because I didn't woo. fucking like him. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like, that's not... Yeah. That's not a bad thing for him. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not saying he's a bad person. I'm just saying I didn't like him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if Yo, he's, I've never you know had this on the podcast. I'm actually. No, like, I'm not it. even. I'm not even like calling anyone out. Yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just. You can't. Hey, he started it, bro. Right? No, you, no, you, you <laughs> can't fucking please everyone. Yeah, and yeah. you shouldn't have to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think I learned that before a lot of other people did. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't have that skill either. I'm not good at not trying to please everyone. I do try. And kind of when someone doesn't like me, I take it offensively. I I'm, exactly like what. I I see why you would, but why do you? Mm. I think it's an insecurity thing, most likely. You know, to sit there comfortably and say like, "Oh, I'm not bothered if someone doesn't like me," proves mm. that you know yourself well enough to know that that person is wrong. You know what I mean? Not wrong, but like I have my opinion. Your opinion doesn't just, matter, yeah. which makes it wrong. You know? Yeah, it just, it just I, doesn't, I'm still, I'm it still doesn't trying matter. to figure out. I'm still trying to figure out what I do and don't like about myself. So when yeah. I hear other people what they do and don't like, I take that on board as information. Mm. I'm still trying to find my own fucking confidence in that sense. So I get it why people, why people think like what I think. But, I think but, just, but let's just say, like, the whole weirdo thing like that. You, I'm going to back anyone up who says it, bro. You did some shit when we were yeah, working. But, and it was yeah. the funniest shit. It was That's so what it funny. was for, though. It was for comedy. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't... Like, it wasn't like I fucking... Like, me and Tubby were just talking about how I drank his... Like, Christos's one-week-old protein <laughs> thing <laughs> yeah. in his car for money. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was for money. It I was, was for a, a laugh, apprentice, though, yeah. And it was for a laugh. Yeah. Plus, I'm new at the company. Yeah. You know, just fucking... You know, get in there, be a yeah. funny cunt. If I don't find it that gross, yeah. If you guys do, uh, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, like on a, on a whole, it, so it was fucking funny. gross. Yeah. Don't be wrong. Like, don't get me wrong. It was gross. Yeah. But like, oh, I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's like it's okay for people to have their opinion. Like I think it is. But for me personally, you made me laugh, bro. You made yeah, me laugh. Yeah. Well, it wasn't like I was going the, home. The fucking and... banana. Ta- the banana tattoo. <laughs> Dude, I've mentioned that story to people so many times. If anyone who, I'm going to pay a picture of everyone who hasn't heard me say it. I remember I said, I don't remember how it came up, whether you said, oh, I got a, I was asking you about your tattoos. Mm. And you're like, I've got this crab here, this one here, and I've got a banana here. And I said, oh, and you, a couple of them, you had like a meaning for them, you know, yeah. you had like something to say. And then I said, what's the banana for? <laughs> and you go, oh, it's just my favorite fruit. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, dude, that's the weirdest thing ever. That's why it's so funny. Like, that was so weird. So I think, I think weird is an insult. Weird is hilarious. I like weird. I'm weird, bro. Yeah. I like weird. But yeah. But I think there's definitely a, a way to say. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, if there, there's some sort of maliciousness behind the way something someone can say something. Mm-hmm. You're right, and like, I like I said, I couldn't give two fucks about what anyone says. Mm-hmm. That's fine, mm-hmm. whatever. But don't paint a picture for other people. Mm-hmm. Well, like, well, you yeah, know, someone right. sees could see me coming on here, and then they they'll go back and think, "Oh, this kind's a fucking weirdo." Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not. Yeah, I'm yeah. a fucking normal person. Yeah, of course. Of course. You know, I've done some shit that's weird, but I'm sure you guys have done some shit oh, with your dude. mates that are fucking oh, weird. Dude, I do weird shit like once a fortnight. <laughs> yeah. Once a fortnight, that's average. <laughs> yeah. That's average numbers. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. People shouldn't um, paint bad pictures about other people. But I think I think time definitely separates a lot of of a lot of people's judgment, right? So one aspect could be if you haven't seen someone in a long enough time, mm. it'd be easy to make an assumption on that person. Second would be you didn't spend enough time together plus the fact that you haven't seen each other in enough time. So mm. I can imagine, say, for example, the Jaden situation saying it. I, I would bet money that if you two seen each other today, 
it would be fucking completely fine. And then if you both had a different opinion on each other, I would bet money it would change. I'm not yeah. saying you would have the complete opposite effect. If you didn't get along before, I'm not saying you would be best mates now. Mm. But you wouldn't be as far stretched away from the truth as mm. you are at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like, like I've said it already. I could not care less mm -hmm. about what anyone says to me. Yeah, but I think it's important to just say for anyone, just we're just say we're speaking as an example. For it, yeah. you can use this in a different sense, a different yeah. metaphor. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it like it would be literally be bygones, be bygones. Like, mm. I'm not gonna hold it mm. against him because he said it. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say that there is consequences for going on podcasts yeah. and calling people <laughs> names, Jaden. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good. Well, I'm glad he stuck up for yourself. I'm glad he stuck up for yourself. I do love Jaden. I, I can see him saying it. I can see. I, I can I, see why people would like Jaden. Yeah. I'm saying I didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, perfectly yeah. fine. Well, I like everyone. I'm not taking anything away from Jaden when I say I like everyone, but I just, I just genuinely like most people. I, yeah. I consider mo pretty much everyone I encounter, I consider them to be a friend. Yeah. I do. Well, that's maybe why people don't like me, because I don't have that ability to be like, oh, he's a good guy. Mm, mm. Like, this isn't focus at anyone. Yeah, yeah, but Just yeah. like any like anyone, like, if I don't think he's, like, that great a person, mm -hmm. I'm not going to pursue him to be a friend of mine. Mm. I'll be like, oh, you're just a person. Yeah, you see, that's crazy. I don't have, I'm different in that sense. I meet a person and I think to myself, like, this person is now my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always think that. My first time meeting someone. Oh, cool, another friend. <laughs> friends. Yeah. 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 yeah, wow, that's interesting. I hate the feeling of when people remember you and you don't remember them. That's like, oh, oh I straight hate up. that kind of... Dude, I've got, like, five or six people that I can think of right now and I see them regularly and I just think to myself, <laughs> like, who the fuck is this cunt? What is his name? Where do I know him from? And every time I see him, it's oh, Doxy, Jay, hi. Oh, yeah, your name's real easy to fucking remember, too. Yeah, Doxy, like me, yeah. Can't... Jack is so fucking easy to remember. Well, I don't go by Jake, I go by Dox. Doxy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I don't, I like... Jack's easy name, eh? Jack's, yeah. Jack's like your name, name in my phone. It's Doxy. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what it should be. No one. If it was Jacob, like, gay. I, like, I remember, I think, working at our previous company. It was like, oh, you're going up here with Jake. I was like, who the fuck is Jake? Yeah, is he new? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was a new guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was friends with a couple people that I'm friends with now, like, good mates. And they didn't know my name was Jake for like two years. Mm. They just for two, we'd be spending like most that most weekends together. Yeah. They had no idea my name was Jake, which I like that. I like that. The only people that should call me Jake is my mum, my sister, and the girl that I'm seeing. That's about it. And maybe like office ladies, you know what I mean? Like I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take office ladies. Yeah, yeah, nah. So your new company, you're enjoying working at there? Yeah, yeah. You obviously like, you've been there for a while. How long have you been there for? I'd well, say since three I three or left. four years. No, it's only like. Two and a half, almost oh. three, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it's just been cracker since I got here. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been out by myself, doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. Just that independence yeah, is sometimes what you need. It's definitely what you need. It's like sink or swim, man. Like, you get thrown out in the deep end. If you drown, that's all right. Yeah, bye-bye. You might get resuscitated <laughs> and give it another go. Yeah. But if you're dead, then get out of the trade. Yeah. Like, it's not for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a great metaphor. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? It's exactly, it's perfect. It's perfect. Like, you can't, you can't be afraid of it. Mm. Like. You've, you've done your swimming lessons. Exactly. <laughs> oh, fucking give it a go, mate. And if, yeah, it's the ocean and you're fucking stranded <laughs> and there's no one for a hundred kilometers. But if you didn't listen to your swimming lessons, <laughs> yeah. you're going to die. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. Who's going to carry the boat? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Someone, like, there's a point in time where I think every technician has to you know, stop those phone calls back to the office saying, how do I do this, this and that? Mm. And if you do need to make a phone call, you need to have your information ready yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, people like... X. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People like those guys in the office, they're good enough to be able to tell you what's happening if you give them the correct information. Mm -hmm. But as long as you've got that information for them, then they can do that. Mm. Like, don't call them up and go, oh, I don't know what's wrong. Yeah. Have you done this? No. Yeah. Put your gauges on? No. No. Is there power? Like, oh, I haven't checked. I don't know how, like, I I do not know how some people do it, eh? Yeah. yeah. You get into a fucking job, the first thing you should be doing, if it's, a, like, a refrigeration issue, put your gauges on. 
I disagree. You I can, don't think. Oh, if it's a refrigeration issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. A, like yeah, purely so refrigeration. Right. Yeah, yeah. Put your gauges on. Yeah. Like, you can tell from if your gauges on the coil's blocked. Mm. You can tell if the filter's blocked. Yeah. By what it's doing and what part. And just it's crazy that people don't do that. Yeah, I know. I, I it's it's a it's because there's it's such an information overload, bro. And you really you really got to find a good tradesman in this trade in the beginning. If you don't, you're fucked. You're fucked. If you don't have a good tradesman, and the tra- when I say good, I mean like he can't be figuring it out as he goes. You got to have someone who knows exactly what the fuck but is up. Also, the improv is a very important part in our trade too. Yeah. You need to be able to improvise. Yeah. Yeah. If you can't do a job with things that you've got, or if you can't do the proper way, mm. but if you can get it going with things that you've got and get them back up for two days mm. until, you know, the weekend when they're shut, and then you can come back Monday morning with the gear, they would much prefer that rather mm. than go, oh, we, we can't turn this fridge on for four days. We've just lost $10,000. Yeah just from not being able to put cakes up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Customers are money hungry, brother. Yeah, yeah. They want to save as much money. Yeah. And make as much money. Yeah. So that, that's, that's one thing I can't handle about the fucking uh, service and stuff part about the trade. Like, everyone just worrying about the dollars so much. Like, I get it if you want to save money, and it's like, yeah, saving money is important, but i only want to do something right i don't i don't ever want to do something the cheap way even if it helps the customer out i'm just like fuck you shouldn't have a fridge if you're not you know what i mean you shouldn't have a fucking fridge oh yeah if you can't like i don't know if like don't tell me that in a week they don't make more than enough profit to cover a two thousand dollar service call yeah yeah otherwise how are they in business Mm. because it's not like it's happening every week they need to pay two thousand dollars yeah be one breakdown mm. and they could be good for another five years yeah and they fucking complain complain give me a better price yeah brother and you should get up the bags brother <laughs> yeah i know bro like yeah what are you doing <laughs> yeah yeah and it just ruins our trade too because mm. we can't you know we can't afford to be paying people to train apprentices there's not going to be a future generation if people keep on cutting down costs mm. Because people not wanting to pay our wage, like to pay our rates, ultimately affects how much we're going to be getting paid, which all affects the future generations of our trade. Yeah. Because no one's going to want to go into refrigeration if you're getting paid peanuts. Yeah, yeah. It's a shit job. Yeah. Like, it, it's it's definitely a fucking lifestyle that's different to most jobs. You, you need to like you need to be built different yeah. to be in our trade. Yeah. I'm not saying that. You don't have to be built different to do other trades too, but Chippy, you can go home. And that mm. building is not going to fucking break down overnight. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That house isn't going to fucking fall down. When are you going to get a phone call at one o'clock in the morning as a Chippy? Yeah. 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 But you could get a phone call from a big hotel and all their beers are off. And they are not very happy yeah. if they can't serve beers. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just think that we... I still think that we are not paid enough mm. for what we do because without fridges in Australia, we would stop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Without refrigeration, Australia stops. That's a fucking, that's a mad quote. I like that quote. It's a, it's a hundred percent true. I think that we can't blame the customers for what we're getting paid. No, no. I think that no, it's definitely, definitely not. up to the bosses. <laughs> it's the company I work for, I'm happy with the money I get paid. I obviously want to get paid more. I'm always going to want to get paid more. And I think they are, in my opinion, generous with the money that they're given out. Mm-hmm. But a lot of companies are not generous with the money they're given out. And you know they're making money. Like, you know, we know how much profit businesses make because we do the jobs, we do, we, we write the invoices, we see. You can count your own invoices for the week and you can have fucking 10 to 15,000, 20,000. I remember one week, I remember me and Fossey, we counted like something like $70,000 in invoices in a fortnight or something like that. And it was like, we're scraping together, you know, to get lunch. I get it, we were apprentices at the time, but it's, if a, a tradesman should always be able to, we should be by far one of the highest paying trades. You know what I mean? It's not, it's just not like that. 
Like they, I don't. I personally don't think a business should make more than ten percent on top of the guy of what he's uh, what he's bringing in. You know what I mean? Mm. Like if you're if you're getting paid, let's just call it a thousand bucks a week, the business shouldn't be making more than a hundred dollars on your labor. You're the one doing the labor. All the extra money should come out of the parts, the call out fees, the markup, all this kind of shit. I mean, I, in in a certain way, I get why they need to mark us up so much. Like, say I get paid 25 bucks an hour, but I'm getting charged out at 120 bucks an hour. There is all, like, the public liability insurances yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that stuff. That... Well, let's just say that's included in the $1,000, <clears> but... Yeah. Let's just say, like, because whatever you get paid, let's call it fucking 25 bucks is easy number. It, sh- it actually should cost the business about double to keep you employed. Mm. Paying your tax, paying the insurance, paying the uniforms, holidays, all yeah. these things. It ends up being about 50 so how can a service call be $110 an hour every hour? Well, I'm only making 50 bucks for and you're, two, and you're, and you're getting paid 200 50. Yeah, they see, that doesn't make 40. sense. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. I think that you, after all expenses are paid, like 10% is more than enough money. You're making the guys fucking... It's ridiculous. Mm. It's ridiculous. I think that's what could change. I think if I was to ever open a refrigeration business, which I don't think I will... That's one thing that I'd try and pride myself in, yeah. you know, paying the boys a lot of money. It's like money talks. Money will create good employees, happy employees. Productivity. Fucking... Yeah, productivity. That's what... I know a lot of companies pay productivity bonuses, but I've never seen a productivity bonus. No, no. EBA, a lot of EBA businesses will do that. EBA sites, construction yeah. sites. They'll do that kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah, but if you were to go into a different trade, what trade did you say you go into? Like mechanical Some things? sort of mechanical. Yeah. It could be like generator mechanics, maybe. You, you said you tried the office to work, you can never do anything Yeah, like I did that. it. And it was just, like, sitting behind a desk is, like, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, being, since being, like, a first year, I've been on the road, and now I'm sitting behind a desk, because mm. I feel like, I feel like I'll push myself too hard because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. You know, it, like you hear people that be like, oh, I've got like 40 emails to read through today and reply. I feel like the way we got pushed when we were apprentices, we could do that by nine o'clock yeah, and we'll be right. fucking... Yeah, I'm that done by smoke, oh, yeah, we'll be sure. fucking like Morning sweet day. for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. And then I'd be burnt out by like three days into it yeah. because I'm just fucking gone ham on everything yeah okay i don't i'm not saying i'll be good at it mm-hmm. but i feel like i just do it too quickly mm-hmm. and i don't know, i guess we don't learn how to pace ourselves in refrigeration because yeah. we just just go 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 yeah yeah definitely definitely so we don't have a pace a eh? we don't i think i think i could do some form of desk work like say if i was editing videos i was filming my own videos yeah i could do that eight hours to ten hours a day i really could but that's only because I enjoy it. Would I be able to edit someone else's videos for them? Fuck, now we're talking, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, I guess probably the only thing that would bring me behind a desk, doing something for myself. If you would ever open your own business, would it be inside our trade or would it be for something else? I'd probably... I'd probably try to do our trade or some aspect of it. Like, I don't know. I'm just... I feel like I'm too relaxed at the moment with my work. Mm-hmm. It's just so cruisy right now. I don't need to think too much. Mm-hmm. You just get in, do your job, go home. Mm. Like, I don't want to think about starting my own shit right now. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of chase and work. There's a lot of fucking financial planning. There's a lot of fucking calling up, making sure you get paid because you're still waiting on that fucking invoice. Well, And it just becomes really hard when you see that, you know, you do a job for the company you're working at and it's only like a $700 bill. But customers will fucking kick and scream Mm. about paying $700. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how long, how much do you think it takes for me to register my car, put petrol in my car, buy the part you need? Mm-hmm. My time is still worth something as well. You got mm-hmm. to factor that in. So all that together for me to come out to drive an hour to you to fix your thing for you, so you can make more money. Yeah, yeah. But you don't want to pay me. Yeah. Well, I'm like you don't know what you're doing with your fridge. Mm. Either try fix it yourself, 
Oh, fucking or, don't oh, just throw it out. Yeah, yeah like, there's yeah. no skin off my back. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's what was good about the last one. When we, we worked together at that company, he would like, he would every time the phone rang, yes, yeah, $110 for the call out, $110 for the first hour. Mm. Every time. First thing he'd say, 110 for the call out, 110 for the first hour. So that was, okay, cool, call me back. You know what I mean? Having all day, every day. Phone ring, yep, this is what it is. All right, let me know, call me back. And they'd call back. They're going to call back, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You say fucking YouTuber then, man. Like, yeah, yeah. You want to figure out how to change your compressor and where to buy the compressor because yeah. not many people will sell you a compressor cash. Mm. So yeah, is there many uh, like situations like that inside the industry you're in, like doing beer taps? And I can imagine sort of pubs and clubs yeah, well, and things. a lot of pubs and clubs have their own dedicated cellarman. So we work pretty close with the cellarman, so we can. Like, the good ones always have spare kits, spare, like, just spares for all parts we need. Mm -hmm. For one, we don't have to charge them for a part. Like, you know, you buy four beer pumps, like, a year ago. Mm -hmm. And in that year, you've made fucking 60 times the amount mm -hmm. of money that it costs for four beer pumps. Yeah. And our four beer pumps go... You've got them straight away to replace them. We don't have to charge you for them, and it doesn't feel like such a sting. Yeah, yeah. This is like, when they do that, it's so much handier for us. Because mm -hmm. then, they just, like, all aspects of it, the office people, they don't have to log and cost four beer pumps. I don't have to install four beer pumps out of my car. Mm -hmm. They're just already there. Mm. So those type of guys, we work, like, pretty close with. And they'll, they'll ask for training, like they'll come and pay us to go out there and show them how to do like tap kits or fob kits. And they'll like, it's it's not hard. Mm -hmm. Beer plumbing is not necessarily hard on the service side of it mm -hmm. when you know what you're doing. Like you, if you stepped into a cellar, you'd probably have no fucking clue what's going yeah. on. Yeah, looking at it first. Like, as soon as I walked in there. Yeah, exactly. Walked... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, a, a couple months training in it, you can learn to do things quite quickly. Mm -hmm. But with your, like, original question is, yeah, there is a lot of people who try to, like, swindle their way out of things, and mm. it's just like... They're still, they're still the same as cafes and, and shit like that. Cafes and cool rooms. It doesn't matter where you go, man. <laughs> yeah. They're all the same. Yeah. But, no, I've got, like, I've got really good relationships with some of my customers. Mm-hmm. And, like, he'll be starting to change something before I get there. He doesn't care if it, like, oh, it costs him the same amount. Mm. But if he can start doing it before I get there, it's just easier for me if he's mm. not doing anything. That's cool. as well. That's heaps cool. Well, I'm in a position now at my company, so I'll give a quick backstory because I, have actually, I haven't explained this on the podcast yet, but I got called into a... Oh, I don't know if I can say this. I should be able to say this, but... I got called into a meeting at the company I work at this this week that just went past, or the week before, the week before, and I thought it was going to be regarding one one issue that happened um, that wasn't a too big of a crisis. So we wanted to discuss something, but then the first thing they bring up, I sat down across from the owner of the business. There was my manager who was my PM, and then there was like I think he's like the overall manager of the entire company. So I was just asking that I had a co-worker with me as well. So I, I was pretty certain we wanted to discuss a certain job, you know? And the first thing they said was, um, so the first thing we wanted to say is that we're not here to make you feel attacked for any reason. We're here to discuss this as a team, That's you know? That's a great way to start off. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> Fuck, here we go. Yeah, yeah, and then they said, so you aren't in any trouble. We just want to have a discussion. But we do need to talk about the podcast. I just... Fucking, apparently my mate told me I went white as it goes. Like, I just, and I had things that I wanted to bring up that day. Like, I wanted to bring up, like, the future in my trade, what I want to work towards, how I can see myself improving. Well, I'll ask for some feedback. This is what I wanted. With. This is what I wanted to say. Yeah. So then I was with my co work, and then. Is this, is this cut? Like, are you cutting? No, me? no, I'm going to put this in. Oh, okay. <laughs> I decided I'm going to put this in. So then they go, yeah, we want to talk about the podcast. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Fuck, like, fuck, what have I done? What have I said? Like, oh, no. And they go, 
Yeah, so we had a listen to the podcast that you boys did together, and then I'm just like, I look at him, he looks at me, I'm just like, fuck, what have I said? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, look, from here on out, you cannot talk about work. Like, I'm so, like, my, the owner of the business even said, like, he goes, I'm a big Joe Rogan fan, and he preaches that he feels so grateful that he doesn't feel held accountable by finance, by corporations. You know, he can say and do whatever he wants to say and do. And then the owner of my business said, you are accountable. He goes, unfortunately, we are held accountable by some of the clients that we have. So you can't be mentioning that shit on the podcast. I'm sorry. And I've just been, I'm like, I get it. I get it because they bring up some key points. Like these are some examples in the past where this person's been blacklisted from ever coming back onto this customer. You might not be allowed on these job sites if you mention them, some of the mistakes that have been happening. You know what I mean? Like they just don't want to be mentioned online. Yeah. I'm just like, fuck, I never even <clears throat> thought about that. But now I'm going to have to be conscious about what I say on the yeah. pod, you know. It's a shame. It really is a shame. I do like being able to talk about whatever I want to talk about, but I get it. So for me personally, I just I just can't fucking mention. I can mention what I do for work, but I can't even fucking talk, talk about, about it. Eh? Much, yeah. It's fucking, it's a bit shit, but I kind of get it. Unfortunately, it is what it is. If anything ever came up where it's like, yo, you just can't be fucking talking... If I wasn't okay with it, then I'd be like, oh, well, then I'm just going to have to just stop working where I'm working. Yeah. But they're like, oh, no, we, we we respect what you're doing. We like what you're doing. You just avoid talking about it. So then I just fucking had to fucking throw that out there. Hopefully they don't get mad at me if they fucking listen to this, you know. You told me that before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to but... get blacklisted from this. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but these are like big. I'll, I'll tell you this now. This is, I won't put this in, but yeah. yeah. So I, I, I prefer to just keep everything. Yeah. Yeah. On the DL. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's I'll good. talk about stuff, but it's just like a natural censorship mm -hmm. of things. It's just easier. Yeah. Less drama. Yeah. No, nah, it's good. All right. I'll tell you what I do want to do with you, Jack. And that's <clears> this segment called Deep Questions. Okay. All right. Hit me. If you've heard the podcast before, you know that I will ask. A random generated question. Unfortunately, I've had a lot of these before. I do need to find a better app, but I can't find one. And I'm not going to make you enter every question first. Sometimes I'll go first. Sometimes yeah. you go first. So I'll start, the I'll start the first one off with the first question. What do you believe is your reason for existing? I have not had this question yet. <laughs> um, I think it, my reason for existing is... Wait, before you talk, how good are those dogs, eh? Can you hear them? They're fucking so annoying, huh? Is this... What side of the house is this? This is the backyard. Yeah. They're not yours. Nah, they're not mine. I would kill those dogs, eh? I would kill those dogs. I've <laughs> said on the podcast before. fucking yappy dogs. I would kill them and I wouldn't care. So sorry to cut you off, but what do you believe is your reason for existing? Yeah, I'd say I think my reason for existing is probably... I want to say make other people happy, but... Just to give give someone else a reason to keep going, mm. not not to keep them. Not, I don't fucking care whether they go home smiling, mm -hmm. but maybe if they just they get home and they think oh, I can probably do it another another day, mm -hmm. then they, they might run into some, another person that gives them another two days. Mm. But I'm not even crying like the, that. Wasn't that emotional? But <laughs> I, I don't didn't, know why, bro. I, just I can't got, see you crying. <laughs> I just got fucking like they went really fucking like watery. Oh, I didn't see any of it. It's like they went, I'm not crying either, bro. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crying, crying, man. I'm not crying either. I don't know why that was like a that, no. They just started burning a little bit. Yeah. Like, well, oh. the fucking beautiful answer. I can't lie. If you were crying, I would understand it. <laughs> like I think I think people listening are. <laughs> But no, I love that, bro. I love that reason. I, I'm gonna pick you back on a little bit. I think my reason for existing is to is to do as much good as I can yeah. for other people. Like, it's... There's just something that makes me feel so happy about doing that. I want to be able to entertain people, that's one thing, which is why I've got the pod, one yeah. of the reasons. I love I love the feeling of having people entertain for... Even if it's fucking... Even if they watch one episode a year, like, fuck, I gave that cunt fucking two hours, you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. killed time. That time that he could have spent doing something bad. So yeah. if he, he wouldn't he wouldn't choose my pot off over doing something good, but he's definitely choosing over doing something bad. Yeah. So I, I, I'm with you. I think the reason, and it's cool because there is no actual reason, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we get to make it up ourselves. Yeah. Like I guess people who are religious 
if people are fully religious, what do they believe their reason? It's to spread the message of God, eh? Is that what religion people believe? Oh, it's all, like, essentially. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to think, like, does anyone know their reason? Like, well, that's what, I think that's a fucking dead question in itself. Do you know? Yeah. Because yeah, well, a lot like, of people don't. Yeah, like, I think. they think, I think they know what they're here for, but yeah. obviously, like, I'm, I don't believe in fucking God. Mm-hmm. So. You don't taking... believe in God at all? Nah. In any sense of it? You don't believe there's any higher power larger no. than ours? Oh, there's probably something. I don't think it's a fucking beard of blokes sitting in the sky. Well, I'm with you when you say you don't believe it's a beard of God sitting in the sky, <laughs> but I'm not agreeing like I, I i do believe in god but i don't believe it to be a meta like it's a metaphor it's a it's a simile you know what i mean it's a word that can be I used to describe was one one person if any person's a crazy thing like i don't well, think anyone believes that uh, no i don't believe it's one thing mm-hmm. if i was gonna be the closest thing i would believe in it would be either like the greek gods or even like the like Thor, mm-hmm. and like Norse, Norse, Norse gods. yeah. That's probably like, I feel like it's better to have a god for a thing, mm-hmm. like rather than just be like, one god is the best. Yeah, like, how yeah, can yeah. he be? Yeah, yeah. If there's a god for hunting, and a god of eating, obviously they're fucking like you know. They mm. picked. They picked what they wanted to be good at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I I spent a lot of time thinking about God. I do. I really do, because I went through a period of my life where I thought Christianity was the answer. So I was like, in I believed I was a Christian, but it wasn't until I started to learn more and open my mind up more to possibilities that I started to realize, hang on, the Quran is actually the exact same thing as the Bible, which is the exact same thing as this religion as that religion. They're all the same thing. So that it's made me realize like. Just- I, I, I do genuinely believe that everyone is trying to explain the same story, just in a different way. So I think there is a God in a sense that, like, it's an, in the same way that, like, you can say there is love. Love can't be explained. Love is, like, if you really want to, like, pick apart love, what is it? It's Is it selfish because chemicals. you... Yeah, <laughs> it's chemicals. Is it selfish because you want the other person? Or do you really want the other person to be happy? You know what I mean? Like... I think, I think God is a metaphor, but I think it's the e- it's, it's the easiest word That's to describe. The closest, yeah. I would say if I was to believe in God, I'd say it's a metaphor. Mm. Of course, because God's a word. Like God's just a fucking sound. God's just a way of trying to explain a thing that we can't explain. You, you named that God. Well, or even things that we're scared to find the answer for. Mm. So yeah, if like you, if you write it off as some bloke. Yeah, so it's yeah, just doing yeah. it's way easier. Yeah. So I guess you don't have to think about it. Mm. Yeah, but I think like saying some bloke. Like, well, no, example, like you know what I mean. Like I'm not like bloke, but mm-hmm. a thing, mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. to put it up to just something is way easier for us as humans. Yeah, yeah. Than to find out. It, it kind of is a scapegoat in a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think. The word God has been the biggest scapegoat in the history. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, people fought wars. Well, I think word. that religion has been the biggest scapegoat in relig- in history. Religion is using the God, because God's the one thing everyone wants the answers for. Mm. You know, it's what happens after we die? Why am I here? Like, is there anyone looking after me? Is there something that makes me the same as this person? Are we looking out for each other? Like, that's all under the word God. And people use that. And religion is the pathway to cause wars and fucking burn the fucking libraries of Alexandria and wipe out Peru and fucking take over the Philippines. All these things are done in the name. I guess you're right, in the name of God. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. what I mean. Like, yeah. I'm like, because I grew up doing Catholic schooling and all like very big Catholic family. Mm-hmm. And I think it was like me and my brother. We're like, this is a fucking scam, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a cult. <laughs> this is a fucking... Bro, well, every that is a thing. cult. Bro, I got, like, I got in so much trouble when I was in high school. Because mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't... Like, you'd go to assemblies at a Catholic primary school or um, high school. And, like, you have to do the prayers. And yeah. like, I wouldn't do them. Yeah. And I got in so much trouble for calling, like, Catholicism, like, the world's biggest cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
like it was yeah. like serious trouble. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, this just proves my point. Yeah, I but, know. Oh. it's a shame. And I thought I find super interesting the fact that like Christianity and all these things like everything is just like a bunch of different things put together. So say like Jesus' birthday was never actually the twenty fifth of December. Mm. His birthday. If you're going to look at ancient texts as a factual thing, like if you're going to assume that Jesus was a person who really did exist, like I do, I believe that, yeah, this guy really lived. The miracles and all that stuff, I'm happy to be up for debate on. But I just believe that, like, my personal opinion is he was just another prophet, and I believe that every single person ever born is a prophet. You know what I mean? We all have a connection to a higher power. This cunt might have just been really fucking good at it. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, he's unlocked some mad and it's in. went on world, world skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, his birthday was in, like, the fall or something, May or March. And the, the pagans and all the fucking people who believe in Norse, they celebrated their religious day on the 25th of December. Mm. And the only way to get them to come combine with them and stop pillaging was to be like, okay, you can have the day, all right? Just believe in our God. You can have the day. What was it, like the Yule Festival or something like that? I'm not sure. Yeah. The Yule Festival. Something like that, maybe. Oh, you're saying the day when they uh, worshipped? Like the, yeah, like the Christmas the oh, celebration yeah, yeah, yeah. was like the Yule mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, I'm looking for that. Sounds like, it sounds like it would be it. Man, just play Assassin's Creed. Yeah, play Assassin's okay. Creed um, Valhalla. Yeah, um, yeah. Like a cracker. <laughs> yeah. But even like, say, for example, the Catholic Church, how he wears like the outfit he wears and that symbol for the fish... Like, all the things, like his head costume, they're all pagan gods. Mm. They're worshipping the same gods they worship. They just combine their religions. Yeah. I think that's... But because of that, like, that, that should be a reason for people to not believe in God. But for me, that's more evidence that there is a God. Because there's so many different places in the world trying to find out what this God is, that they're just like, fuck, let's just combine our shit. You know what I mean? Like, mm. it doesn't take me away from it. It leads me more towards it. It's just like, I don't believe in any of the pathways to what God is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how we got to that. What's your belief? What is, what do you believe is your reason for existing? That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I remember where I was hole. getting that. I was trying to say like, because we all get to make up our own reason for existing, it's very interesting to see what people's reasons are. Yeah. And one good reason for me is to have kids. That's a massive I was reason. Good at that. I was going to say that. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the other answer, well, sort that... of, at this point in time right now, that is closer mm. to me. And you could also use your first answer to instill in her kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, like exactly. You want to make your kids' life happier, you Yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's I want... a very selfless answer. I don't want to I don't, I don't raise a kid to just think about himself. And that's, like, part of the reason why, like you said, you want to be an entertainer and do that sort of thing. I've always had the ability... To make people laugh, mm -hmm. regardless of whether it was at my own, what's the word I'm looking for? Like choice or expense? Like at, yeah, at yeah, my yeah, own yeah. expense, even yeah. if it was. But if I can, you know, and it just proves that, because I guarantee that some of the people that have said things, they were laughing at the time, mm -hmm. and they still remember it, mm -hmm. because they're still talking about it. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it means that I have had... A lasting positive impression. Impact, a positive the, impression. Whether it. they want to say it that way or not. Yeah. Well, the, the, regardless. I'm sure like, they're not going home and love. cutting themselves because I <laughs> yeah. drank a milkshake. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, yeah. like they'll laugh about that, mm -hmm. even if they do it at my expense. Whatever. Mm. You know, yeah. I've, I've I've made someone's hour better, yeah. which again with the ripple effect can fucking go on and on and on well dude that does ripple effect because like say for example like i'll use the banana story yeah like that made me laugh so hard because it was so out there for me that i couldn't <laughs> imagine getting a tattoo because it's your favorite fruit like yeah. that but that story has now i've told other people that story so even though i laughed hard for like 10 15 minutes every time i think about it i laugh and <laughs> yeah. i smile and every time i get to tell the story i can exaggerate it for as long as i want for as long as i want and yeah. there's more entertainment yeah, other exactly. people are having a better mood yeah and then they'll they'll laugh and then yeah someone might walk over so oh, what are you laughing at and then he'll tell the story yeah yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. You know, i'm not saying it has gone to that level but it had like everything that you do has a possibility mm -hmm. to have that, mm -hmm. whether it is negative or positive. So I think that's what people really need to think about when yeah. they do things. Yeah. Well, fuck yeah. I'm glad that was a fucking. That was the question because that fucking <laughs> led me to a fucking. I loved it. No, that, that was a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Oh, okay. yeah. Um, do you believe people are mostly good or mostly bad? Let me think about this one for a second. <laughs> yeah. I think I have my answer. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you hit it first. I'd say I believe there's no such thing. If you're going to look at it in a in this, if you're going to ask this question for what it is, there is no such thing as good or bad. Good or bad is a personal pre personal opinion. Mm. All right, subjective. So, Completely. Yeah, subjective. So it, I always tell myself, like, if I found 50 bucks, like, that's a good thing. But someone dropped 50 bucks, that's a bad thing. Exactly. So there's no such thing as good yeah, or bad. So I think, I don't think people are mostly good or mostly bad. I think people will feel, uh, do I, I think the question should be, do I feel like people take in positivity or do I feel like people take in negativity? That's the only way I could answer this question. I feel like people mostly take in Negativity, yeah. Negativity sticks harder. Yeah. It, I would probably go... I do agree with what you're saying, but I still think most people will be bad. Mm -hmm. Just naturally. Accidentally. Mm -hmm. Like. Oh, I changed my answer. I just thought of it. You go, you go. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, when you're a kid, you have... This is a personal, personal story for me, mm -hmm. right? I was a kid, got hermit crabs for Christmas, mm -hmm. right? That same morning, a kid doesn't know any better. I thought crabs like the ocean. <laughs> Mum's coffee's liquid. <laughs> what can go wrong? A plus B, C. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I dropped the hermit crab in a coffee. Yeah. Everyone's screaming. <laughs> Pull out the cunt's bright orange. <laughs> and dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I think you're inherently bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it is accidentally, mm -hmm. until you learn that you can do good. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you, we don't have a concept of good or bad when we're children. Mm -hmm. But most of the things we do, like, you never hear of a kid that isn't perfect. Mm. Right, so they've always done something, mm. regardless. Yeah. So I don't think you can sit there and go, humans are good mm. from the minute they're born. It doesn't necessarily mean they're bad people, but they've done bad things, mm -hmm. even if it is an accident. It still is like subjectively bad, mm. not like you can never look at me putting. A crab and in a coffee like, and be like, person, no, yeah. no, like, oh, I'm saying the opposite. You can never look at it and go, oh, he's a good person because he put the crabs in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it came from good intention. That's, that's the crazy yeah, part yeah. about it. Like, you know what I mean? But I'm sure, like, someone, you know, who didn't just say someone stole 10 bucks off someone mm -hmm. and he really needs that 10 bucks so he goes and kills him. Mm. Is he thinking that it was a good intention because yeah. he needed his 10 bucks? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Well, that's why I think it's a difficult question to ask because I think to myself, like, if I'm looking out for myself, that's a good thing. If I, if 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 my reason for existence is me, mm. then if I'm looking out for my best self, it's a good thing for me to rob this cunt. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like, it actually is. It's actually. But then good. it's. But it's a bad. Thing. Inherently bad. It's bad <laughs> to for that person. Go kill someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah. I think until we know we're capable of good, we're bad. Mm. And if people don't learn that they can be good, then they're going to continue to be bad because they don't see it as a, a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So this is lucky it's called deep questions. Yeah. It's, like, yeah, yeah. it's getting deeper because I'm... Well, I'm getting deeper do, just thinking do you, about Do you know it. what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like, Dude, what's making me think deeper into it is <laughs> like, I'm gonna, I would have to change my answer because like, if you're going to think what is good, I would have to say longevity in life that would be the ultimate goodness yeah. you know what i mean a long prosperous life a short prosperous life wouldn't be good compared to a long prosperous life yeah. that would be considered bad so people are mostly bad because people don't do things to help benefit the longevity of their own exactly. lives everyone's always eating what they shouldn't be eating vaping drinking smoking like there's and you're a, not and you know again it's bad for it's you bad but you but do it, you do it, it anyway you feel good <laughs> exactly you know what I mean? like it's good because That's i like, want it so yeah, let's if do you, it. you just got to think about it on a on another level yeah not not the not the surface level yeah yeah because if you like that that question is very deep in itself because you can't I, like 
I think I summed it up pretty well in yeah. saying until you know you can do good and until you do things to make yourself better, you're going to do bad. And people who haven't had the education or haven't had the like facilities or even the experience. Yeah, or yeah. experiences that make light out of a bad situation. If they've just had bad situation, bad situation, bad things happen all the time, they're going to think that's a normal. Mm. So they're just going to be a bad person. Mm. So, yeah, I guess at the end of it, people are inherently people are bad. bad. I think they're bad too. And I, I think it's because like we know what's good and we know what's bad and we... And when it comes to longevity in life, that's my, that's, I can't think that anything's better than living a long, prosperous life. Yeah. So if you're not constantly making the decision to make your life longer, then you're bad. <laughs> yeah. Because you've got to think, if you don't put yourself, like I'm saying, if you don't, you don't do things that you know are good for you, why would you do something that's good for someone else? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. like... Yeah, well, uh, fuck, that was a deep question. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deep question. So, when you're 60 years old, what would you like to say that you've accomplished in your life? I think... Just brought more people into the world that will help. Mm. I don't know, like, not... I don't really care too much about what I do mm -hmm. but if there was something I wanted to do it would be just put more people in this world that can help other people especially like coming from someone who has had like the mental illnesses and that sort of thing sometimes it is all just you only need one person to say something mm -hmm. and and probably kill Pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's about it. Yeah, good. That's that was about a good it. one. That's a good one. Well, I'm the same. I think I got two. My one would be, one would be to create offspring. That's if I'm 60 and I haven't done it yet. Like fuck. I'm still not saying it's not possible, but like I'm running out of time. You know, mm. at 60, I'm still I'm still hopefully shooting positive loads, but like <laughs> I don't know. I am 60, so create offspring and then. The second one would be I want to be able to provide more time uh, in entertainment than I've been alive. So YouTube's convenient because you can see total watch time. And I wanted that number to one day be more time than I've spent on this planet. That would be a mad feeling. I'd love that. That's a, that's a niche. <laughs> a niche <laughs> want. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I don't know. It's just something that ever since I started, I always... There's just something that's so fulfilling about knowing that someone's entertained because I'm, I'm i'm so grateful to watch podcasts i love them i will watch a million of them bro so i'm so grateful for it yeah good answer well i have one final question that i do ask everyone that comes on the podcast but before i ask it i have to say thank you very much for coming and doing That's this episode right, with man. me i've enjoyed it a lot that's all good if only these could go for 10 hours i swear <laughs> to god i'd do 10 hour podcast i reckon that'd be that'd be a bit of time behind this one <laughs> yeah if there was a, if i ever get to the stage of live i'll never have to go back and edit it which would be awesome yeah well, but maybe i'll just wait until i get employees and i can deal with that yeah. Make, I can deal with it. <laughs> yeah but the last question i ask is that if someone come to you for advice mostly because they were feeling depressed because they felt lost what advice would you give that person I'd say that if you've got something to live for, just strive at being good at doing that. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be doing... Well, you're, that thing is obviously important enough to you now, and if it can get you out of that, it's going to be important to you for the rest of your life. So if there's something that makes you hesitate when you get into a bad spot, just hold on to that and use it as a stepping stone. Because mm. you can use that thing over and over and over again. It's not like it's a fucking get out of jail free card once. Mm. You know, you could say that thing and then like you have a couple of good weeks and you get bad again, but then you find it again you can do over and over again and as like as cliche as it is it most of the time it gets better mm -hmm. 
So I'm not going to go and tell everyone that it's 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 going to get better because mm-hmm. you might not. But I think if you can at least work on trying to get out of, like if you're in a tunnel, a cave, you you don't know the exit. You're not going to sit there and roll over and die. Yeah. You're going to try to get out, aren't you? Mm. I guess just try. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't have to get better. Just try to. Yeah. Yeah. The best way to say it. And I think that those two things you said did contradict in a positive way because mm. like saying to someone, it may not get better, but if you're doubling down on the one thing that is keeping you going and you're investing your time into that thing and it's what's helping you, then that thing will get better. You know, if you're giving all your fucking time, energy and resource into one thing, then that thing's going to get better. So then your situation is going to get better because that thing will create more positivity and you're actually creating a positive feedback loop, you know, and through that you may find more things to keep you going, exactly. but you may not. But I think that the situation will get better because you're investing your time into what, into something. When you invest your time into anything, it gets better. You know, it doesn't matter if it's fucking Xbox. It doesn't matter if it's fucking Pornhub. Your yeah. Pornhub search is gonna get more defined, you know. Yeah, no, you're gonna. There's gonna be a point where you you you've looked at all the videos, and then you're gonna you're gonna go a, one more word that brings up a whole new list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, new category. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just like like I said, just try. You mm. don't have to get better right away. Mm-hmm. And even if you don't get better, at least if you tried, you can like fight for yourself. Mm. If if not for anything else. Mm. Yeah. Well, beautiful episode. I've loved it very much. I've loved those answers. That was some of my favorite answers I've had so far. I'm looking forward to these group podcasts in the future. I might see if I can get a, a bit of a Jerry Springer episode now. <laughs> you no, just made me reevaluate my whole series of what I want to do in the future. Um, like yeah. I said, I was going to say before, I'm grateful for everyone who's got me to this position, whether it was a negative or a positive influence. So, although I've, I don't want to say the word called out, but although I've said something about someone, mm-hmm. it's, there's no bad blood from my end and anything that happens, mm-hmm. it's sort of up to them. But yeah. like even everyone that I've had up to this point has helped me get here. So all I can say is thank you. Mm-hmm. And now I'm making money. So. Yeah. Yeah, cool. What a nice thing to say too. And I didn't think that you did anything out of bad intentions too. I think that you just addressed the situation. Yeah. Yeah. I think bad. it was. I think I just I, I exaggerated because it, <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> yeah. But as I say, Barry, thank you very, very much oh, for coming good. over. All good, brother. Beautiful. Yeah.